You're watching the Sun Belt Game of the Week on ESPN as we welcome you to Boston Stadium in Statesboro, Georgia, where tonight the Georgia Southern Eagles seek to clinch the outright conference championship playing host to the ULM Warhawks. A look at the Golden Flake. Sun Belt standing. Georgia Southern's already clinched a share with Louisiana Lafayette. They're done for the season. They wrapped it up today with a victory. They are 7-1 in the conference. Georgia Southern seeking to finish 8-0. And, oh. and good evening, I'm Matt Stewart, joined by former Notre Dame star linebacker and eight-year NFL veteran Rocky Boyman. And Rocky, Georgia Southern made history in FCS, six national championships, and making history here in their first season of FBS in the Sun Belt Conference. Well, they have a share of the Sun Belt title. The mantra all week has been leave no doubt. With a win tonight, they can they secure their first undefeated season in conference play and an outright title their first year in the Sun Belt. Intrig the only thing standing in their way are the UM Warhawks who are coming in ready to play tonight. Absolutely. Intriguing matchup of Georgia Southern spread option offense and ULM's attacking blitz heavy defense. Let's start with the Eagles on offense. The centerpiece is their quarterback, Kevin Ellison, who's just eight yards shy of 1,000 yards rushing for the season. Well, Kevin Ellison, he's the focal point of this offense. He's the, the point guard, the conductor, whatever you want to call it. A real challenge for him tonight because of what ULM does defensively. They stun a lot, blitz a lot, make that look he has to have real down pat. Makes it look very muddy. He's got to be very good just in his sophomore year here. Warhawks with 35 quarterback sacks this season. That's the most they've ever had in the Sun Belt and just four off their FBS program record. Their playmaker on that side of the ball is their safety Mitch Lane he's gonna have his hands full with that option tonight well, I think Mitch Lane is the most athletically gifted player on the field now he plays that rover that hawk position he's got to do a, a really good job tonight diagnosing all the nuances of that triple option attack and most importantly Matt he's got to tackle well and he's got two defensive scores by himself this season it's the ULM Warhawks and the Georgia Southern Eagles meeting for the fifth time ever the first time since 1991 as the Eagles seek to write another chapter in their great history book. The opening kick is coming up next. Back at Paulson Stadium, just about set for the kick between the Georgia Southern Eagles and the ULM Warhawks. Eagles, just the third program ever in FBS history to win a conference title in their first no year headset. joining Nevada and nothing. Marshall. Nevada won it in 1992, Marshall in 1997. Also third most wins by a first year FBS team since joining 10 and three Marshall and nine and three Florida Atlantic. And ULM stands in the way of them making history here tonight. Their head coach, Todd Berry, in his fifth season since 2010, a record of 27 and 33, 56 and 92 overall in his 13th season as a head coach. Tyler Kane stands deep for the Warhawks. And Young Way Koo will kick things off for the Eagles. He's got 34% of his kickoffs that have gone for touchbacks this season. Eagles have not played for two Saturdays since their seven game winning streak came to an unceremonious end in a 52-19 loss at Navy. Meantime, the Warhawks snapped a six game losing streak last Saturday with a 30 to 17 win at New Mexico State. And Kane will take it at the one yard line. And Tyler Kane will scramble forward to the 23 and that's where the Warhawks will go on offense for the first time tonight, led by Tyler their Payne on the graduate return. senior that quarterback, the Heath Eagles Thomas. Heath Thomas completed 59.9% of his passes for 2,874 yards, 12 touchdowns, and that quarterback six interceptions, number 14, Heath Thomas. A game. So first and 10 from the 24 is where they spot it. Go to the air, complete for Rashawn Caesar. Comes this pass is complete to number two, Rashawn Caesar. He is pushed out of bounds by Edwin Jackson. Gain is three. Second down and seven. Thomas under a heavy rush. Loops the sack attempt, throws downfield, and it is caught by Kinsey Jackson. Did he get a foot 
Pass intended for number 23, Kenzie Jackson, is incomplete. It was incomplete. He did not get his foot down, or either he did not have control when he went Nick Wright on the coverage so for the Eagles. Third down and seven. Holding number 21 on the defense. Ten yards from the previous spot. First down. Tony Backard is our official. You heard the holding call against the cornerback, Nick Wright, which will give ULM a first down at the 37-yard line. So first and 10 for the Warhawks as they pick up the first down following the incompletion. Pete Thomas with his completion on the very first pass broke the all-time record for completions in a season at 274. Kenzie Jackson underneath. Picks up the first down as Kenzie Jackson gets the ball across to midfield to the 49 Jackson. of the Georgia Southern Eagles. He's forced out of bounds by Matt Dobson. Gain is enough for a Warhawk first down. So first and 10, ball is at the 49-yard line. Handoff goes to Centarius Donald. Donald was a game time decision, was considered doubtful the entire week Centarius with an Donald. upper body injury, but they decided in three game Johnson. warm ups that Centarius Donald would be Jackson. able to go, and he picks up three yards on his first carry of the ball game. Now splits wide to the bottom of your screen. Second down and seven. Pass caught underneath by Kinsey Jackson. Jackson gets a first down. Jackson had a career high 13 catches a week ago Kenzie in the Jackson. victory against New Mexico State. Nick Wright knocks him down. Gain is enough for a ULM first down. No. So first and 10, ball is at the 38-yard line. Pete Thomas throws again to Rashawn Caesar, and the Warhawks moving the ball quickly Passes down the field to in the two. passing game, which is Rashawn what virtually Caesar. they're going to do the entire night. They basically abandoned the running game. Well, well, first of all, I'm back, partner. Sorry about that little bit of technical uh, difficulties. But, yeah, that's what uh, ULM does so well. A lot of high percentage passes just methodically move the ball down the field. That's probably the best thing to do to keep that powerful Georgia Southern offense on the sideline. Second down and four. Pete Thomas will run, try to shovel the ball forward. They will rule that an incomplete pass. That was close to being a Pete fumble. Thomas on the carry. And now it's going to be third down. He's tackled by number 51, Pete Jamal Thomas Johnson. Off one of his best games he's had all season last week. Here we see a look on the replay here. Nothing there. You can see Pete Thomas, not Richard the most fleet of foot guy in the world, but did a good job of not taking the sack there. Now third down and four. Brings up third down and four for the Warhawks. Caesar goes in motion behind the line. Thomas looks to Caesar, throws to Caesar, and has a first down on the catch by Passes Caesar. Complete to Rashawn Caesar. Caesar with 69 catches for 734 coming into the ball game and a couple of touchdowns, and he moves the sticks again. When you touched on this, Matt, the, the run game for a has Warhawk been non-existent all year. They're averaging 2.3 yards per carry, so they, they kind of run by throwing a lot yeah. of these short passes, just keep moving the sticks, and there you see Caesar with the first down. Yeah, they use that short passing game as an extension of their run game. Then they go over the top and try to hit you with a big one right there. Kenzie Jackson was the intended pass target. intended for number 23, Matt, Kenzie Jackson. Going to win this game tonight. That's the pass they got to the connect. I remember George a couple weeks Southern, ago, you and I did the UL Lafayette, UL Monroe game. And that's the pass he was missing at times. And he has a wide open wide receiver down the field. Got to hit him. Last two games, Pete Thomas has completed 70% of his passes for 822 and three touchdowns. That includes that career high 472 that you and I witnessed against UL Lafayette. Passes thrown incomplete for Caesar. Now it's third down and 10. Pass intended for Rashawn Caesar. Edwin Jackson on the cover. Brings up third down and 10 for Monroe. Junior wide receiver. They got an explosive wide receiving part for Matt. We've talked about it. Jalen Holly, Kenzie Jackson. Also out of the running back position, Tyler Kane does a good job as well. Yeah, those four guys, you could probably stack up against anybody in this conference. They would be the best group. Third down and 10. to the corner. Again, Kenzie Jackson, almost the exact same route as That's before. And it's fourth down and 10. And incomplete. 
Justin Manton will come on. He is one of the best field goal kickers in the nation, not just this conference. He's hit 19 of 22, 86 percent, and he is a semifinalist for the Lou Groza Award. And this is what Georgia Southern's defense has done all year. They're kind of a bend but don't break. They'll give up a lot of yards, but they all come the red zone, come this area of the field. They do a really, really good job, and they do here tonight on the first drive. 44-yard kick from the right hash mark. The kick is on its way, and the kick is no good. And the kick is he hooked it. Justin Manton doesn't miss often, just his fourth miss of the season. And UL Monroe comes up empty on their opening possession. So Todd Berry's ULM Warhawks come up empty on their opening possession after a rare 44-yard field goal miss by Justin Manton. And now, Rocky, we see the Georgia Southern Eagles go on offense for the first time, led by their head coach, Willie Fritz. Eight and three in his first season here in Statesboro, but a great resume. 22 seasons as a head coach with 184 wins, just 70 losses, one tie, a 724 winning percentage. And what Georgia Southern does best is run the football. How about this stat? In the 22 years that Fritz has been coaching, 91% wins have come when they've had one more rushing yard than the other team. They're already averaging 385 yards on the ground, which is good for number one, the Sun Belt. Well, with this first rush here, they will better probably ULM's rushing total for the ball game. The Warhawks simply are not going to run the ball much in this ball game. Breida on the carry. Matt Breida up to the 30-yard line. Goes picks up four on Matthew the play. About made three by on the play. Kissinger. And how about Matt Breida? He averages 9.34 yards per carry. And I'm not a math whiz, Matt, but that's almost a first down every time that young man touches the ball. 141.4 yards of all-purpose offense per game. He is one of 10 semifinalists for the Doak Walker Award, which, of course, goes to the nation's best running back. That's Walker in motion behind the line. Breida gets the handoff again, and Breida scrambles forward about three yards on the play. Jaron Johnson makes the tackle. Breida on the Warhawks. How about the nose tackle? tackle Leads the team now with I've never seen. Tackles. I've never seen that before, and he's going to be critical here tonight really just stopping that point of attack. And you can see what ULM does. They penetrate, they shoot gaps. And then one thing I know about the option offense, the kryptonite of it is penetration defensively. Third down and five here for the Eagles as they have it at their own 33. Brita again, and Brita's got the first down and more as he hammers out and across the 40 to the Brita. five yard line. Brita gets 12 on the play. Lane, but not what a surprise Matt Breida has been on the season here. Picking up the third and five. This is what he did. Bounces off a tackler's twist. Keeps his legs driving. Just a sophomore. I still love the story, Matt, about how Coach Fritz said coming into camp, they didn't think they had any running backs. And here comes this kid, L.A. Ramsey, back from injury. Here comes Matt Breida back from injury. And, man, they have put on quite a show on the ground this year. Came into the ball game with 1,434 yards rushing on the season. First and 10 for the Eagles. And Ellison with the double move going up top for B.J. Johnson. B.J. Johnson got hung up there with Ellison Lindsey Pipkins, the cornerback, and couldn't Johnson. get free. And it's going to be second down and 10. Cordero Smith on the coverage. Well, you're right, Matt. They the tried the double move, but Lindsey Pipkins, the cornerback, number 31, was not fooled. And Kevin Ellison passing, he's been kind of up and down, a little bit inconsistent. He's got a 58% completion percentage. Some games he, he does a good job, and then like last week uh, against Navy, they'll, he'll miss some wide open guys. Yeah, Willie Fritz made a point when he was talking to us this week that they've got to hit those one-on-one -on -one matchups in the passing game this week. Second down and 10, ball at the 45. Walker goes in motion. They'll run a pitch to Walker. Walker's got a first down. Zach Walker across the 40 and down to the 36-yard line. Zach Walker. As Walker gets 16 on the play. But here's what really makes this option game quick watch. You'll see Ellison right here. Nice job on the read, then the pitch. But look at the blocking downfield by the wide receivers. There's Ken Trellis Showers. There's B.J. Johnson. Coach Chris could not stop talking this week about the job his wide receivers have done blocking and really springing these long runs for these running backs. Zach Walker, the senior wide receiver out of Johnson County, one of 22 seniors playing their final game at Paulson here tonight. Ellison, heavy rush, gets away from two tacklers. Now 
heads up field and gets to the 34. Picked up two yards on the play. Kevin Ellison on the quarterback keeper. Kevin Ellison is just so elusive back Kevin there. You can see he's mad. He Jackson. thought he could have broke that for even more. ULM brings the blitz on that play, which they do virtually every play. They often Dan bring three. five or more. As you can see on the replay, coming off the edge here, Hunter Kissinger with an open lane. Then there was Mitch Lane right there, the guy we talked about in the open. Could have brought Ellison down for a big play. Instead, goes forward now second down seven. Ellison replacing Jarek Jet McKinnon as the quarterback at Georgia Southern. Although Ellison did start six games last year, including that upset of the Florida Gators. Mitch Lane hits Ellison at the 31-yard line. And Kevin Ellison on the quarterback keeper. Michael Johnson, the Sunbelt Combine's defensive Johnson. player of the week, number 34, finished it off, and it's going to be third down. And we got to talk about this. ULM defensively is playing without one of their best players, the linebacker Ray Stovall. He had a broken foot last week in the game, but nevertheless, four, they got a bunch of linebackers that can run sideline to sideline. Hunter Kissinger, Michael Johnson, who you mentioned. Mitch Lane is basically a linebacker from that Hawk position, along with Cody Robinson. Third down and four from the 30. Rita. Rita lunges forward to the 27-yard line. Lorenzo Jackson, the defensive end, making the tackle. Lorenzo and it's going to be fourth down and close. And I don't think there's any hesitation here. Georgia Southern is going for this. Up the line quick. Fourth and less than a yard. Rita, first down. Rita down to the 24-yard line. Michael Johnson making another tackle for the Warhawks, but not before Rita picks up the first. Just a simple dive play. Good job. Hat on hat up there by the offensive line. See number 96, Jeff Ward, who's an offensive tackle. He plays a fullback position. Did a great job at the point of attack, allowing Breed to get the first down. Now Devin Scott into the ball game as the back. As Breda comes out after picking up the first, it's first and 10 at the 24. Run the same play. Walker's not available for the pitch, and he gets it anyway. I thought Walker was out in front of him. I didn't think there was any way Ellison, Ellison could get him the pitch. He was Walker. able to readjust and take that he pitch to Ellison and pick back. up about six yards on the play. I mean, Kevin Ellison is a surgeon at this offensive attack. It looked like he was going to go down here. Watch the replay. Goes with a dive. Hunter Kissinger right on his, on his heels there, and just right at the last second, pitches the ball out, and Justin Backus isn't in good position. And a decent gain for Georgia Southern. It looked like ULM had defensed it well, and they were out of position on the pitch, and Ellison still got it to walk. Well, they weren't counting on Ellison to flip that ball out that late in the play. On second down, L.A. Ramsby with the carry. Ramsby with his you know, first carry the ball game gets to the 16, and it's going to be third down and short. And this is the area of the field where you really see L.A. Rams. 5'11", 210 pounds, more of their power back, if you will, really runs well behind his pads. Again, last year was injured, coming ahead of an ACL injury, and shows up here. Well, he missed all of, of spring practice, shows up in, in uh, first day of training camp, looked great, and he's been a real weapon all season. He was an option quarterback in your hometown of hometown, Cincinnati. Yep. Third down, Ramsby again, first down for the Eagles. And just as ULM will be methodical on their offensive side, throwing the ball down the field, Georgia Southern's going to run it down. First down. Well, Todd Berry, the, the coach of ULM, said this week, we're going to force them. If they're going to win this game, they're going to have to do it through the air. Well, so far, Georgia Southern is really making hay on the ground, Matt. Yeah, it's an interesting and intriguing matchup of ULM wanting Georgia Southern to force them to throw the ball. Georgia Southern wants to force ULM to run the ball. First and 10 for the Eagles at the 13-yard line. Rita back in the ball game. Senior offensive lineman going here in this ball game. This offensive line has been the real story this year. Here we'll see a look at the replay. See 76 right there. 
Jaron Johnson just does a good job getting upfield, and McBurnett just hooks him a little bit, negating the touchdown. But this offensive line this year, very senior-laden group, has done a fantastic job blocking. Ellison to the air, throws to B.J. Johnson. B.J. Johnson tackled by Pipkins in the open field. That's complete to B.J. Johnson, 18-yard line. And that's what Georgia Southern does. They sprinkle in just enough pass to where you have to respect it. You know, as soon as you're thinking, oh, they're just going to run the ball all day, they're just good enough at the passing attack to be dangerous. As you see, they get Kevin Ellison rolling outside the pocket a little bit. And hits Johnson for the completion. Man down for ULM. It might be Pipkins who made the tackle on that previous play. I think he was. He, he was walking back towards the middle of the field and just collapsed, head down on the ground. And if he's hurt, that's a real blow, Matt. He is one of their best players in the in run defense. I mean, it does a great job out of that corner position, not only playing the pass, but a real force on the run on the perimeter. Hopefully for ULM's sake that Pipkins is okay. So Pipkin shaken up. We'll check on his status when we get a moment. And when we get back with the Eagles driving for their first score, or what they hope will be their first score of the ballgame. Back at Paulson Stadium in Statesboro, Georgia. Georgia Southern trying to finish out a perfect season in the Sun Belt Conference. They have driven to the 18-yard line. They're on their opening possession and facing a second and 16. With the success that Georgia Southern has had, it's still hard to believe that just one year ago they were an FCS program, went 7-4, and 4-4 four, four and four in the SOCON, tied for fourth place, I believe. But here they are, make the bump up to the conference with a chance to win it all, Matt. How about that? And that's one of the things that Willie Fritz challenged the team with when he took over the program. Are you the team that went to Florida and beat the Gators in the Swamp, or are you the team that yep. went 4-4 four and four in the SOCON? Kevin Nelson, plenty of yeah. time on the play clock. Getting the play from the sideline here. They run a reverse to Monte Crockett, and Crockett got tackled in the open field by Lorenzo Jackson for a loss. I'll tell you what, Matt, if Lorenzo Jackson wasn't there, that play might have Lorenzo gone to the Jackson. house. An excellent job in an open field tackle by the six foot two, 235 pound defensive end. Look, it's Lorenzo Jackson and nobody else right there. Excellent job in the open field making the tackle. Lorenzo Jackson, how about him? The former walk-on got granted the scholarship and making big plays out there. Jackson now with 12 and a half tackles for loss this season. He has had a big year. One of three players out of Richwood High School in Monroe, Louisiana, playing on this defensive side of the ball. On third down and long, Ellison takes off running. Ellison crosses the original line of scrimmage and finally driven out of bounds by Bacchus. And Lane, Lane makes the got the 10, but they will not be able to pick up the first down. Justin Beckett. And Alex Hanks will come on for a field goal attempt. It's a good job by Ellison, if nothing else, is picking up some He's extra yards and making this a shorter field goal. For the Eagles from the 10 yard line. So Justin Manton missed a 44 yard attempt for the Warhawks on their first possession, and now Hanks is on, Hanks on for what will be a 27 yard attempt from the left hash. Good. And the kick is good. And the kick is good. It's his first in five weeks. And now 10 of 13 on the season as the Eagles take a 3 0 lead. Well, a big mark on that previous drive as Georgia Southern's quarterback Kevin Ellison went over the 1,000 yard mark. For the right, season. Hey, How about the teacher? Get on your feet and make some noise for Gannis Teacher. Three nothing Georgia Southern after the 27 yard field goal by Alex Hanks. Kevin Ellison on the run that set up the field goal went over 1,000 yards rushing for the season with that run. He's got 19 yards so far here tonight. How about that again? Just a sophomore. He, there's so much on his plate, Matt, in this triple option attack. He's got to be so good at reading all the keys, and he doesn't turn the ball over much or at all or anything either, but still, with all that said, still goes over 1,000 yards rushing on the season. So the Eagles with a 3-0 lead here in the first quarter. 
trying to wrap up a phenomenal first season in the Young Sun Belt Conference by going 8-0. and oh. No team has ever started, no first-year team, I should say, has ever started 7-0 and oh in the Sun Belt Conference. Well, the Eagles have done that. And now trying to wrap it up at 8 and Kane will take the kickoff at the 2. And Tyler Kane falls forward to the 28-yard line or thereabouts, and that's where the Warhawks will go on offense for the second time tonight. Matt, this ULM offense has really changed a lot over the years. Started off the season, they wanted to be a run-heavy, play-action pass team, but it just wasn't in the cars. The offensive line couldn't block very well enough to establish that run. So a couple weeks ago, they split to or switched over to what you see now, which is essentially a, a real spread offense type team, four wides, five wides, kind of like they had last year with Colton Browning at quarterback, and they just allow Pete Thomas to sit back there and play pitch and catch and try to move the ball down the field. And also want to say a welcome to Danielle Percival, the third member of our team down on the sideline, and we'll be checking in with her throughout the course of the ball game. First and 10 for the Warhawks from their own 29-yard line. Underneath, they go to Kane. Kane gets wrapped up and thrown to the ground immediately by Edwin Jackson, the Mike linebacker and leading tackler on this Georgia Southern team. His 96th tackle of the season. And Coach Fritz said Edwin Jackson, he's a gym rat, a film rat, a, a therapy rat. He's, he's always in the football building, he loves this game, and always wants to get better at it. And how about this? Came in into Georgia Southern as a 189-pound walk-on. He leaves as a 235-pound linebacker, maybe one of the best in school history. And he's up for the Brandon Bullsworth Award that goes to the most outstanding player in the nation who began his career as a walk-on. So second down, Thomas hit as he throws. It sails out of bounds. And Rashawn Caesar over there on the sideline, way over his head. He wasn't open either. And it's going to be third down. And that's the thing. Pete Thomas can be very accurate if he gets time, if he gets a clean pocket. We saw it last week, 70% completions on the day. But he's not quite as good as most quarterbacks are when he has a lot of pressure in his face. An offensive line without a lot of help has got to find a way to hold off Georgia Southern defensively. Already in this game, Pete Thomas has set the single season ULM record for most completions and pass attempts. He needed six to break the record for pass attempts and only one to break the record for completions. And there's another completion thrown over on the far sideline to Kenzie Jackson. Jackson steps out of bounds and we'll see exactly where he did, but he does pick up the first down. Well, that's the guy they have to get going. Last week, Kenzie Jackson, a career high, 13 receptions for 108 yards. He's their explosive guy. Nice job, Pete. Thomas gets the time in the pocket, sets his back foot, bam, hits Kenzie Jackson. Nice completion. And he's already got three catches in this ball game as Kenzie Jackson Makes another grab at the 44. That's his fourth catch of the ball game and the eighth completion for Pete Thomas. He needed just one to break Colton Browning's single season mark of 273 set in 2012. Moving very quickly, Kenzie Jackson again the target and again they move the sticks. I'll tell you what Georgia Southern is doing a good job defensively doing is tackling. They're, ULM's going to complete a lot of passes. That's the, the design of their offense. A lot of short, high completion or high percentage throws. The key for Georgia Southern all night through four quarters is tackle the guy. Don't allow them to get extra yards after the catch. You were talking about Kenzie Jackson's game a week ago, Rocky. Six of his 13 catches against the Aggies of New Mexico State went for first downs. That was a first down right there. So first and 10 from the 38. And Pete Thomas just has to sail it out of bounds. He had no place to go with it. Has intended for Rayshon. So second down and 10 coming up. Todd Berry, not only the head coach, but also the quarterback's coach, so intimately involved with Pete Thomas on a daily basis, even more so than the head coach and quarter might, quarterback might otherwise be. Yeah, and he was integral in getting Pete Thomas to come to ULM. He said, spent some time at NC State, a little bit of time at Colorado. A bunch of guys uh, auditioned for that job, and he chose Pete Thomas. Second down and 10. Thomas now being rushed by Dawson, throws it away, and catch is made over there at the 32 yard line or was it i believe that was osborne number 89 the tight end and he was unable to hold on to it so now it's going to be third down and 10. and alex osborne now with 15 catches on the season coming into this ball game 
and you watch this player, Bernard Dawson, the defensive end, 56, just runs over a guy and then gets to Pete Thomas just before he throws that ball away. Great job by Dawson. Pete Thomas has already attempted 16 passes here in the first half. <laughs> He's 9 of 16 for 69 yards already in this first quarter of play. Much more of that to come, folks. And that is a completion. The ball out at the end of the play at the 25, and I believe the Eagles have recovered. The Eagles come up with it. In the football on the play, the Eagles have recovered. Caleb Williams, the cornerback, comes up with the fumble recovery. And what a shame for ULM when they play a very nice throw and catch to Kenzie Jackson. You see at the top of your screen there. Pete Thomas with time. And really just a great job by Williams. Also, he, he's the one that forced the fumble and got on top of it for the recovery. A nice job of not giving up the, on the play by Caleb Williams. Caleb Williams, the third cornerback behind Jones and Wright, makes the big time play to get the ball back into the hands of the Georgia Southern Eagles. So first and 10 for Georgia Southern. They get the ball for the second time tonight at their own 25. Ellison trying to turn the corner, and Mitch Lane was there to greet him. Didn't get him on the ground, but got him out of bounds and a short gain for Ellison. He's out by Mitch Lane. Four. Lane already with four tackles in this first quarter. Yeah, he, he's again, he's that, that guy in that hawk position. He's all over the field. Sometimes he rushes off the edge. Sometimes he plays center field. But look look for the ball. You'll usually find where that's where Mitch Lane is. Had a block punt for a touchdown last week against New Mexico State. In their season opener, he had a pick six that basically turned out to be the difference in the ball game against Wake Morris. Brito on the carry, not much gain. Third down He's coming up for the Eagles. You see ULM, their defensive front, getting a little bit of penetration at times there. Michael Johnson in there. Also, Jaron Johnson, the nose tackle, doing a good job. Brings up third down and six for the Eagles. Could be the final play of the first quarter right here. Ellison, keeper. Ellison takes on the defender, runs over him, picks up the first down. And Kevin Ellison, that's another one of the attributes that make Ellison such a good quarterback in this spread option is his toughness. Well, it absolutely is. I mean, defenders just seem to bounce off this kid. He's not the biggest guy in the world, just six foot, 190 pounds. But, but again, I, I just extremely impressed with such a, a young guy just his sophomore year conducting this offense, which is a tough thing to do, but also finding a way to be very productive as well. And Ellison, their leading rusher after one quarter with 31 yards on the ground. Georgia Southern with a 3 nothing lead here at home as they seek to clinch the outright Sun Belt Championship. And they lead the Warhawks after 15 minutes. Back at Paulson Stadium on a lovely night. Georgia Southern leading ULM 3-0 as we head to the second quarter. Matt Stewart, Rocky Boyman, and Danielle Percival. And you could not tell by the weather we have here today and the field as well as it looks, but there was a very difficult week of practice for the Georgia Southern Eagles because of the inclement weather here in Southeast Georgia. Yeah, a week before arguably their most important game in school history. It rained for about five or six straight days. Standing water on the practice fields. Had, had to practice two days in the gymnasium, Matt. And then on Wednesday or Thursday, I believe, they drove all the way out to Savannah State to try to get on some grass to get a practice in. They start first and 10 from their own 36. B.J. Johnson making the catch at the 44-yard line with the cornerback, Trey Caldwell, draped on top of him. And Matt, for a team that hasn't practiced much this week, they seem to be looking pretty good tonight, both offensively and defensively. Great job here just to, just to keep everything in balance there. They go to the pass and a great strike there, nice throw. They rule it Kevin Nelson. Yeah, oh, ball, okay. You can see the ball came out. We could not see that from where we are because his back was to us. But on the replay, you see the ball was out. So second down and 10. Keeper Ellison. And Ellison gets held up at the 42-yard line. Kevin Ellison on line. the quarterback keeper. Kissinger, the middle linebacker there to make that tackle. Tackle made by number One thing 10, Todd Berry, ULM's head coach, talked to us about this week, remember Matt, he said there are going to be a lot of in-game adjustments because 
Georgia Southern, every week, they come out with a new wrinkle, a new little thing they do. So what they're going to have to adjust to things as the game goes on here in the second quarter, at, at, at halftime, all throughout this game. To the Eagles' benefit, as we were talking about their practice week, they did have an extra week of practice because they had a bye after their big loss at Navy, 52-19. Uh, Todd Berry used to that. <laughs> he was the fifth opponent this season that's had a bye before they played the Warhawks. Pass complete to Devin Scott. Devin Scott slips as he saw Hunter Kissinger closing fast. Pass complete to number 28, Devin Scott. Kissinger, Hunter Kissinger makes the stop. And it's going to be fourth down in a punting situation here for the Eagles. That's a nice job. They just try to shoot the ball to Scott there, but just a nice pursuit there. Good body position by Hunter Kissinger. I don't know if Devin Scott hadn't slipped there. He's a tough guy, just five foot five, Matt, to try to bring down. But fortunately for ULM, they're going to have to punt. Rashawn Caesar standing deep. And now number two, Rashawn Caesar. Ryan Nowicki standing deep to punt for the Eagles. Heavy rush. They come after it and a booming kick by Nowicki. Caesar calls fair catch and makes it at the 23-yard line. And that's where the Warhawks are going offense for the third time in this ball game. Caesar makes the fair catch at the 18-yard line where the Warhawks so take the over. Warhawks the offense 10. goes back out there. Pete Thomas, 10 of 17 passing for 82 yards so far in this ball game. They have one rush for three yards <laughs> so far and probably won't have many more the rest of the game. Yeah, very one-dimensional. Pete Thomas is probably going to put the ball in the air 50, maybe 60 times tonight if they're going to have a shot. Good shot, Pete Thomas. Nice tall kid, 6'5", 235 pounds. And now Braley Brown, the junior, checks in for him on this series. Brayley Brown gives them a little bit more of a threat as a running play, as a running quarterback. Brayley Brown, that was Caitlin Watson the on the Warhawks. carry right there. Watson, to number just his ninth carry of the season, but on the depth chart here today because of the uncertainty surrounding Centarius Donald. And we did see Donald carry the ball on the first play, but we have not seen him back out there since. So it might be a situation where they wanted to give him a carry here on this final game of his college career, yeah. and he might not play the rest of the night. We'll, well have to wait and see what happens. In the history he's had with the three knee injuries, three reconstructive surgeries, it's nice for him to at least get a carry here on senior night. Braley Brown on the carry right there, and Braley Brown gets hit hard at the 21-yard line by Matt Dobson. Matt Dobson is kind of the Mitch Lane counterpart on this Georgia <laughs> Southern Bay defense. Seven, Matt, How about him? I mean, a couple weeks ago, he had a 102-yard interception return for a touchdown that really was the, the, the game-breaker versus Texas State. Down and a smart Literally player back the there, uh, roving around the back end of Matt Dobson. Former option quarterback himself at North Florida Christian, right across the border of Monticello, Florida. Third down here and six to go. Pete Thomas back in there at quarterback. Pass is complete to number 23, Kenzie Jackson. That's Kenzie Austin Jackson Austin moves down. the sticks. I'm Pardon me, that That's was still Braley Brown, not down. Pete Thomas, but Braley Brown getting the first down. So the Eagles were a play away from forcing their first three and out, but Braley Brown's completion to Kenzie Jackson moves the sticks. Brown goes to the air again. Ricochets off of the cornerback, Nick Wright. Pass intended for Jackson. Nick Wright never Nick saw Wright it coming. A bullet right Eagles. off his shoulder pads. Yeah, a little bit of an errant throw, too, by Brown. Check out the replay here. Had enough time to shoot the ball, just uh, got away from a little bit. Pass thrown underneath to Alec Osborne, the tight end. Osborne up to the 39-yard line. Pass complete to Alec Osborne. After being hit by the Tackle safety, Antonio Glover. And Glover. it's going to be third down and short. And Osborne's a guy the last couple weeks. He had five receptions versus UL He had two receptions last week versus New Mexico State. He already has a couple here. I didn't see him much toward the beginning of the year, but he's really been a weapon here both for Bradley Brown and Pete Thomas. Let's face it, when you throw the ball as much as the Warhawks do, everybody's going to get their <laughs> turn to catch the ball eventually. Third down, Braley Brown going to run it, try to pick up the first down. I don't think he got it. Needed to get to the 41 or close to it and only made it to the 40. Braley Brown on stopped. the quarterback keeper. Now, if that was a design run, I don't really Jay understand Ellison that call because they started out spread out wide, then they bring everybody in, and you bring all the defenders back into the box. 
That looked like it was a designed run. Again, I don't, I don't know why you, you go spread and get everybody out in space, then you bring them back in. So fourth down and one. Now let's see what the Warhawks do right here. Actually, they're going to measure to see how close they are. I don't think they've got it. I think this is just a measurement so Barry knows just how close they are. And they're that close. About the length of a football and a half. So not much to go. But do they go for it here at the 40-yard I think it's too early to go for it. It's only a 3 nothing ball game right now. I mean, you know, on one hand, you say, look, UL Monroe's got nothing to lose here. They're playing the role of spoiler. But I think it's a little too early in my book to go for this. You know, Especially we, the way they run the ball. If they ran the ball very well, I, I say go for it. And, yeah, it looks like they are going to bring out the punt team. So Justin Manton comes on. Justin Manton. Manton. For the Warhawks. One of those rare kickers for Eagles at all. Place for kicking, the punting, the kickoffs. And he's really a great punter, too. Ball is dropped at the 21, and the Warhawks may have gotten on top of it. That ball was never fielded cleanly. And the Eagles are able to avert the disaster. We'll see. Keaton back to take the punt and took off running before he had it. But Keaton able to get back on top of it. And there's literally no wind out there right now. So it wasn't like the wind affected that ball. I don't think he, he just didn't get quite under it enough. Rule the air. into the second quarter. Georgia Southern with a 3-0 lead on the ULM Warhawks. Matt Stewart, Rocky Boyman, and Danielle Percival with you. The Eagles, the eight wins for them in the Sunbelt Conference, the most ever by a first-year Sunbelt Conference program. That's their eight overall wins. Their 7-0 conference record, the best ever start by a first-year program. And they're also the lowest ever predicted team to win the Sunbelt Championship. After Rocky, they were picked to finish eighth in the preseason <laughs> coaches poll. How about that? I mean, that, that's really an unbelievable stat there here for this program. It, just, it really just shows you the, the, hit, the history of this program and how they've, how they've competed, how they've recruited over the years. They can make this jump in one year, Matt, and be a part of the Sunbelt title. So the Eagles back on offense and Fabian Upshaw in there at quarterback now. Breida gets the handoff. And Breida gets Fabian a couple Upshaw yards over. And at quarterback Breda for the Eagles. With his seventh and carry of the ball Matthew game, 25 Breda. yards in the game. And there's Fabian made Upshaw, one of the Johnson. fastest players on this team, the sophomore two. quarterback. They like to run him in there on the third series of the first and, half. And here was the third series, yeah. And in the second yep. half. Mm -hmm. And then if things are going well, maybe a few other series. Exactly. Not a ton of difference between him and Ellison, but other than the raw speed of Fabian Upshaw. If he gets in the open field, man, he can go. So second down and eight with the ball at the 24-yard line. So far, only a 27-yard field goal by Alex Hanks, our only scoring in this game. There's Upshaw by the option. There's his speed. Look at the cutback. It's a foot race. And Upshaw is finally brought down by the ankles of the 29-yard line by Cordero Smith. I know not you, man. I'll tell you what. Just like we talked about, you get David Upshaw in the open field, and, man, he can go. Nice job here. It's a little bit of indecision there by Mitch Lane, and he just tucks that bad boy and runs. I mean, look at those long legs there eating up dirt. Just a, he had another weapon for this Georgia Southern program here on offense. Looks like a gazelle <laughs> sprinting out of that backfield. First and 10 for the Eagles at the Warhawks 29 yard line after the big run by Upshaw. Now Breida gets it in a big hole for Breida. And Breida down and to the 21 yard line. Tackling by number seven, Mitch Lane. And, and I'll tell you what, one thing about this offense, you know, you think option, okay, they're three yards in a cloud of dust. They have 35 runs of 25 plus yards on the season. It seems like every six or seven runs that Breida gets, he winds up breaking a long one. It seems like it's only a matter of time. Not, not, not really the triple option like they ran last year under head coach Jeff Monk and more of a spread option because they do yeah. throw the ball more. But the biggest difference in this offense compared to the one that Monk can run was the zone blocking yeah. scheme that they use under Fritz as opposed to the man blocking scheme that they previously used. 
Brito on the carry, and he gets tanked down right away. No running room for Brito right there. You know, to Brito. And now you, you talk about how they Bagel block offensively, and that is the biggest difference. Most option attacks, they're gap blocking, which means man-to-man, -man, lots of double teams, lots of pulls. They choose to do more of, again, like you said, a zone blocking scheme. We'll kind of zone to the right, zone to the left. It's a both inside zone, outside zone, and just allow these running backs, L.A. Rams v. Matt Breed and company, to just find a hole and boom, hit it. And Willie Fritz will tell you that that's probably been the biggest single one key to success this season is how quickly this offensive line has adapted to the zone blocking scheme. Upshaw on the carry. And Upshaw runs right into the teeth of the defense. Bryce Maybe Ray, the safety the carry. tackle. The tackle is made by Joey Gottney. So fourth down coming up for the Eagles right here. The ball at the 21. They've got to get to the 19 for the first, and they'll go for it again, it looks like. down for the Eagles. Interested to see what ULM does defensively here. Do they sit back, or do they try to bring pressure? And Ellison comes back in at quarterback, too, so this might indicate a pass. Although Upshaw has completed 19 of 27 on the season. ULM just changed their look defensively. They run option with Ellison. He won't get there. Mitch Lane is the guy that gets him and stops him from getting to the line of scrimmage. Big play by Mitch Lane to stop the Eagles on fourth down. I told you, Matt, we talked about it in the open. I thought Mitch Lane is athletically one of the most gifted football players on this field. You saw it on that play right there. Such a tough task he has today to feather that option out, but then when he has to strike, he can strike like he did right there. Stops him on fourth down. So the ball goes over on downs. The Warhawks take over after the big play by Mitch Lane to stop Kevin Ellison from picking up the first down. And we're still 3-0 in Statesboro. Well, earlier this week, we had the opportunity to speak with Coach Fritz, who told us that this senior offensive line has really been key for this team this season and contributed to their success. You saw it there on that last drive as Fabian Upshaw broke for the big run. They ended up costing them a little bit earlier in the game with that holding penalty that caused them to just be able to get the field goal. That's the difference in this game so far. We'll see how it plays out from here. Thanks, Danielle. Good job down there. Turned out to be a nice evening for football. Chilling down a little bit now that the sun has gone down. But in the 60s here today in Statesboro, just a great Saturday afternoon on the final regular season Saturday in the Sun Belt Conference. So Warhawks back on offense. And then Centarius Donald getting another carry right there. And Donald, nice little run there. Picks up the first down up to the 37-yard line as Donald gets 13 on the play. Yeah, we hadn't seen Donald ever since the first play of the game, but he's back in there, and you just know. He's saying, this is my last game that I'll probably ever play football-wise. He's going to go out there and try to give this team anything he can. Yeah, Donald stays out there. Again, he was doubtful with an upper body injury suffered in the New Mexico State victory, and it was the doctor's call. Coach Todd Berry said, look, Donald wants to play. It's going to be up to the <laughs> doctors, and we'll just see what happens in pregame warm-ups. First and 10 now for the Warhawks. That was just their second rush of the ball game. Thomas going for the home run. Caesar breaks open. Sprint to the end zone and a touchdown, and the Warhawks have the lead. That is complete to A 63-yard touchdown pass from Pete Thomas to Caesar. And the Warhawks, after getting the four down stop, turns it into points. Well, Matt, we talked about this earlier. This is the pass that Pete Thomas and ULM has got to hit tonight when it's there. And Rashawn Caesar, he beat the midfield safety, Robert Bryce, got behind him. Pete Thomas laid it on the money. Touchdown, Warhawks. So how about that? The Warhawks strike with Manton getting the PAT. And ULM takes a 7-3 lead as Caesar sprints to the end zone for the third time this season. Thomas up top burns the Georgia Southern secondary, and the Warhawks have the lead in Statesboro. Warhawks with a 7-3 lead on Georgia Southern following the 63-yard pass completion from Thomas to Caesar. As we take another look at it right here. Bryce, the safety, gets beat. And Caesar runs under it for the touchdown. 13 completions for the Warhawks so far in this ball game. And Ellison only two for the Eagles. The Warhawks trying to make their presence felt here in the championship 
race of the Sun Belt Conference. Of course, they can't win the conference championship, but as Todd Berry told us during the week, he said, look, we want to make a statement. We want to show everybody that had our season gone a little bit differently, we could have been in the championship picture as well. And the Warhawks have experienced so many tough losses. Their last four losses have come by a total of 18 points against Texas State, Texas A&M, App State, and UL Lafayette. Need to receive for the Eagles, number 23, Derek Keaton. Keaton stands at the one yard line. And he'll back up two yards deep and bring it out. And Keaton makes a man miss. Might have got his jersey torn. It certainly pulled out of his pants. And he's up to the 30-yard line. Keaton on the return. Nice 32-33 yard Jones. return by Keaton. And that's where the Eagles will go back on offense. And now they trail for the first time in this ball game after getting stopped on downs deep in UNL territory. And the Warhawks turn it into a touchdown. So first and 10, ball is at the 30-yard line. Ramsby gets submarined by Bacchus. And off goes to L.A. Ramsby. Ramsby picks up four Justin on the Beckett play to the 35-yard line. Four. Ramsby, a option quarterback, named the Cincinnati Enquirer Player of the Year. His last two seasons played quarterback at Colerain High School there in Cincinnati. Senior year, rushed for 1,500 yards and threw for close to 1,700 yards. Yeah, Matt, he's a guy that I covered actually when I was doing some high school work back in Cincinnati, a really explosive player for Cole Rain. That is Ramsby sprinting to the bottom of your screen and now the keeper by Ellison, and Ellison has a first down Kevin as Ellison he picks up eight keeper. yards up to the 43-yard line. Ellison now with eight carries for 44 yards in this ball game. And how about this? The, the, the two quarterbacks are the top two rushers for the Eagles in this ball game combined. They have over 90 yards on the ground. And you get the feeling ULM coming into this game said, look, we got to stop Matt Breida. Well, if you stop Matt Breida, then Kevin Ellison and Fabian Upshaw go to work, which is what we're seeing here tonight. First and 10 for the Eagles at the 43. Ellison fakes the handoff. Wide open is Ramsby, and now it's a sprint to the end zone. And he is caught by Caldwell in the open field, but the Eagles strike deep into Warhawks territory. And you can just see ULM as Georgia Southern is running the ball more and more. They keep pressing the line of scrimmage, pressing the line of scrimmage. And then man-to-man -man coverage, you see L.A. Ramsby leak out of the backfield for a big game. Nice job by Kevin Ellison putting that ball in the money. So first and 10 at the 19-yard line after a 38-yard pass completion from Ellison to Ramsby. Handoff, nope, keeper by Ellison. Ellison down to the 14-yard line. He gets Kevin five Ellison on the play. This is keeper. such a tough offensive play match just because all the, the smoke and, and mirror kind of things they do in the backfield. They have a ton of different backfield sets, lots of action crossing your face all the time. And as a former linebacker, I'm glad I'm sitting up here and not down on the field having to deal with this all night. Second down and five now for the Eagles as they try to put it in the end zone for the first time in this ball game. Monroe defense, Louisiana Monroe defense has done a great job against the Eagles so far in this ball game. Brita on the carry, and, and Brita tackled Brito. by Kissinger at the 13-yard line. Hunter short Kissinger gain, third and short down. coming up. Fifth tackle of the ball game, or fourth tackle of the ball game for Kissinger. Came in with a linebacker leading 73 the yard tackles up third down and on four the season. The Five Eagles. sacks and ten tackles for loss. Couple of interceptions. Kissinger, he's not the most athletic guy on the field, but a very smart player, makes all the checks, and always seems to be in the right position. Third down and four. Brita, Kissinger making the tackle again, and Brita does not pick and up the first down. Matthew fourth Brita. down, short coming up. Do you go for it again? You got to stop the last time you went for it on fourth down, Rocky. Well, I don't know. I mean, Jaron Johnson is doing such a good job all night as he did on that play of just clogging up the interior part of that line 
the dive hasn't the been there you know, all, all night tonight the quite Eagles. the way the one, uh, Georgia Southern wants it to be. Alex Hanks on uh, I think this is the smart the choice goal. here. Go ahead and take the three points. Ryan Nowicki is the holder. So Jake this Panta will be a 29-yard attempt for Hanks from the left hash. He had a 27-yarder in the first quarter. And he missed it. Pushed it wide to the right. And so and Hanks no good. misses to go. just and the fourth time, time this seven, season. Eagles three. And the score remains 7-3. Yeah, the snap was a little bit high, but I don't think it had much to do with it. He just pushed that ball off to the right. And the, the, the reason this thing's even more mad is that Georgia Southern on the year is 64% on fourth down. You know, they usually they pick up that that fourth down and short there more often than not. I still think it was the right call, but to come up with no points uh, isn't good. This Georgia Southern offense just doesn't seem in sync, and the crowd hasn't been able to get into it because they haven't, haven't been able to get it rolling like they typically do outside of a few big plays that they have not been able to turn into any points. Tyler Kane on the carry, his first carry of the ball game. Dobson making Kane. the tackle, and Lenny Richardson on another tackle, tackle as well the Eagles. Eagles. We Lenny talk Richardson. about ULM offensively. They have Rashawn Caesar, Jalen yeah, Harley, Kenzie Jackson as weapons on offense. Tyler Kane can be that guy with all the attention paid to all his wide receivers. If they get number three going, he can have a big game. That was just the 63rd carry of the season for Kane. Only 212 yards rushing for the season. He is their number two running back. Lock ticks down to two minutes to play in the first half, and the Warhawks have the lead. Throwing underneath, incomplete. Kane again the target. And they use Kane in that capacity. Kane. It's really an extension of the running the game. He actually came to ULM as a slot wide receiver. Brings up third down and seven for the Warhawks. Third down and seven for the Warhawks. Eagles have all three timeouts remaining, so if they can get a stop here, they'll still have a chance to get some points on the board again before the end of the half. Heavy rush, Richardson ends up on the ground. Thomas being chased and tackled as he throws. He was able to get rid of it before Jamal Johnson dropped him on the ground, and it's going to be fourth down. And here's what happened on that play, Matt. They showed Bliss, but at the snap of the ball, they dropped out, only rushed three, and they put into a spy, number 51. You see him right there in the middle of your screen. His job is to just shadow Pete Thomas. He does an excellent job of playing that spy position, hunting Pete Thomas down there, forcing the bad throw. Excellent job there by 51. Jamal Johnson. So the Eagles will get another chance to put points on the board here late in the second quarter. Keaton fumbled his last punt return attempt, but was able to get back on top of it. Manton standing at the eight to kick. Booming kick by Manton. Keaton takes it at the 37. He's got room to run. Comes this way, flag out. And Keaton tripped up and dropped at the 43-yard line by Seattle. It's going to be a hold on number 21, Nick Wright. You saw it right, right there as Keaton was getting going. So that's going to back him up deep into their own territory instead of having the ball at the ULM 43-yard line. During return, holding. holding. Number 21, number 21 on the return team. team. 10, yards 10 yards from the spot of the foul. First down. First down. First down. That was Nick Wright, as you pointed out, Rocky, who made the hold. Watch 21. See him right here at the, toward the left part of your screen, right there. As soon as those hands get outside the framework there and you see the jersey pull, there comes the flag. An easy call for the officials. So the ball back at the 32-yard line. So you factor in the return. This turns into basically a 25-yard penalty against Georgia Southern, but they still have three timeouts, so plenty of timeouts, plenty of time to work with, with 138 to play in the half. And the fact that they have the three timeouts, even though they're a running attack and just 130 left on the clock, gives them a chance to get points here before half. Not that way. Brita wrapped up immediately by Michael Johnson and, and Hunter Kissinger. L.A. Ramsby. Going to try to save a timeout, but they've got to get a play Michael going here. There's a lot of time he can off the clock. Pass, throw, complete, just the third completion. Make that the fourth completion Ellison for Ellison. Complete Zach, Zach Walker, Walker making he is fourth the catch. Out of bounds by number 10, Cordero. 19th catch of the season for Zach Walker. 
third down and short. Got out of bounds, stopping the clock with 74 seconds left in the half. Ellison has completed 57.8% of his passes this season for 865. Just five touchdowns and three interceptions. Actually gets more yardage on the ground per game than he does through the air. Third down, he'll run it, pick up the first down. Trying to strip yeah, Ellison. Yeah, Ellison yeah, picks up the first yeah. at the 36. That'll stop yeah, the clock while they move the change and quickly yeah. Ellison back to his feet to run another play. In a nice job. They don't have to waste the timeout. They used a little bit of time to move the sticks, but they're right up on the ball. But here now starts to click away. Got to get his playoff. Ellison now with 10 carries in this ball game. First and 10, he has to scramble to step to avoid the rush. Throws downfield incomplete. Nice catch made by Walker, but out of bounds, and it's going to be second and ten. He had Zach Walker open deep, and he just been able to find him there. Zach Walker ran a little corner seven route there toward the outside part of the field. Go ahead and try to see it on the replay there. Enough time with just a little bit of pressure right there by ULM forced to Ellison and not to be able to make that throw when he wanted. That's a good example of what Coach Willie Fritz was talking about. Ellison hit or miss with his accuracy sometimes. Yep. A little bit inconsistent in the passing game. No inconsistency for him in the running game. Team high, 55 yards rushing in this ball game. 53 actually on 10 carries, and that's a completion thrown to Zach Walker. Walker, Cordero Smith had him by the jersey, wouldn't let him get away. And Walker wisely steps out of bounds, stopping the clock with 48 seconds. The ball now inside of the Warhawks 40 yard line. First down. First and 10 at the 38 now. Barry Lee's positioning themselves for another field goal attempt by Alex Hanks. And, and still a timeout this, called yeah. by the Warhawks. And they still have, yeah, well, there goes one of them. They still have two timeouts after this one. So the Warhawks actually used that timeout. And that them with two. But what do you take out of what we've seen so far in this ball game, Rocky, with the Eagles being held to just three points so far? Well, it, ULM's doing a good job of what they've done all season, and that, that's you know, keep teams out of the end zone. You know, one of the better defenses in the Sun Belt, second in the Sun Belt in scoring, second in the Sun Belt versus the rush, and third versus the pass. But where they really get good is down in the red zone, and that's what they've done right. And I think some of the fans may have taken the Warhawks maybe a little bit lightly, given their four and seven overall record. But as I pointed out just a few moments ago, they could have beaten Texas State. They played a heck of a ball game at Texas A&M, lost a late win at App State, and certainly had UL Lafayette in a battle a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, they've lost their last four games by a combined 18 points. That's a tough pill to swallow. They played better as the season's gone on here, and last week finally came up with a victory. First and 10, ball at the 38. Ellison, blitz is coming. Ellison gets it downfield for Walker and just missed it. Pass intended for number nine, Zach Walker. Walker got behind his two defenders ever so briefly, but they just could not connect, and it's going to be second down. Yeah, man coverage, and Cordero get, Walker gets behind Cordero Smith. So second down and 10 coming up. You see Cordero Smith, number 10. Nothing, nothing. Walker beating down the field. 42 seconds to play in the half. Ramsby gets the handoff, and Ramsby tackled by Joey Gottney, the defensive end. Now, goes to LA Ramsby. Tackle now it's going to be third nine, down. Joey Clock stopped with 35 that seconds. I believe three. the Eagles just used their first timeout. That is their first timeout and ahead. they did. Joey Gottney, the UL Monroe 7-3, the Warhawks on a 63-yard touchdown pass from Thomas the Caesar, the only touchdown we've seen here in the opening two quarters.
Bulls with 168 yards on the ground and 66 yards passing, a total of 234 in this ball game, but only three points to show for it. Timeout, Louisiana Monroe. And Ready now the Warhawks the use their second timeout after the Eagles had burned their first. Warhawks and the Georgia Southern Eagles last met in 1991 with Georgia Southern beaten at the time when they were ranked number one in the nation by the Warhawks in Monroe, 21-13. All four of the previous matchups between these two teams coming between 1987 and 1991. So third down and eight for the Eagles coming up following back-to-back -back timeouts, one by Georgia Southern, one by ULM. Probably need at least one more pass completion or one more first down to get in field goal range right here. Ellison running option. Will keep it himself. Nice open field tackle by Caldwell, the corner, to drop him at the 20-yard, the 30-yard line, pardon me. And now it's going to be fourth down and two. And again, the Eagles are faced with a fourth down situation where they got to make a decision with 17 seconds left in the half. And now they'll use their second timeout. 30-second timeout. So timeout called by Georgia Southern at the 30-yard line and facing a fourth down and two. Earlier in this quarter, the Warhawks stopped them on downs and turned that into a 63-yard touchdown pass just a few moments later. And then on the Eagles' next possession on fourth down, they decided to try a field goal from 29 yards out that Hanks missed. So while you might not say that the Eagles' offense has been sputtering in this first half, they simply aren't connecting. So they keep Hanks on the sideline on fourth down and two. Eagles go for it from the 30-yard line. Thank you. They put two more seconds back on the clock, so now 19 seconds left in the half. And now the Warhawks use their final timeout, much to the dismay of the crowd here at Paulson Stadium. So Georgia Southern at 7-0 in the conference. They've run the table in this league. Trying to close it out here tonight and finish 8-0. So fourth down and two. Ball at the 30-yard line. So fourth down and two, ball at the 30-yard line. Hand off to Breida, and Breida did not get there, and once again, the Warhawks come up, up with a big stop on defense. Wow. Another big defensive stand by the Warhawks to stop Georgia Southern on fourth down, and the ball goes over on downs with 14 <laughs> seconds to play in the half. Louisiana Monroe takes over on downs. What great penetration by the Warhawks. Cajuns, the linebacker, making the tackle. Tevin Cajuns, number 33. <laughs> and now the Warhawks will take a safety formation and just kneel down and kill the rest of the clock. And what a performance by this ULM defense in the first two quarters of this ball game. Twice stopping the Eagles deep in Warhawks territory on fourth down 
also capitalizing on a missed field goal by the Eagles and the Warhawks seeking to prove that they belong and should have perhaps been in the championship picture themselves doing an admirable job of that here in the first two quarters with a 7-3 lead at halftime. And now down to the sideline, Danielle Percival standing by with head coach Todd Berry. Thanks, guys. Well, Coach, the story of this first half, your defense holding the Eagles to just three points. What's been the key to shutting down this triple option attack? Well, it's, it's got to be the discipline. I think we've tackled pretty well for the most part. But, uh, you know, we've, we've, we've played pretty good discipline football, and that's what you have to do against the option. Now, your offense has made some big plays, including the touchdown to Caesar, but really some missed opportunities. What's going to be the focus here at halftime? You're right. I mean, obviously, we've, we've, we've moved the football, but then we've got down in the red zone and we've stalled out. That's been kind of Eagle our fans, season. We've got to stay focused the here in the second zone. half. It's 0-0 zero, zero right, right now. We know that we don't have a lot of opportunities nice based off their offense, and so offensively, we've got to take advantage of that. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Thank you Danielle. Todd Berry's ULM Warhawks with a stout defense here tonight. Even though the Eagles have 240 yards of offense, They've been held to three points in the touchdown pass from Thomas the Caesar, our only touchdown as we head to the break. Let's take a look at the first bank and trust first half stats with the Warhawks on top of the Eagles. Ten first downs for the Eagles and double the time of possession for Georgia Southern. But the big story, Rocky, in that first half was the defense by the Warhawks. Well, you're right. I mean, double the time of possession. And also, Georgia Southern has 240 yards of offense in the first half, but only three points. you got to give a lot of credit. We talk about this defense for ULM coming in. They attack. They swarm one of the better defenses in the Sun Belt. And, Matt, they came to play tonight. Let's take a look back at the first half highlights. And they've had no problem running the ball. Great pitch right there from Ellison to Zach Walker. Yeah, the quarterbacks have done a pretty good job. Ellison's done well on the ground, and so has Fabian Upshaw. But really just, you know, here's the first field goal that was made. Unfortunately, the, the next one was not. But again, doing a pretty good job on the ground, but just not able to capitalize. And here's the long touchdown pass from Thomas to Caesar for 63 yards after they had stopped the Eagles on downs for the first time in this ball game. Yeah, they let, let him, uh, Rashawn Caesar get behind him on defense. And uh, again, that's a play that we, we talked about in the first half. ULM offensively, they'll go a lot of short passes, just try to keep keep the chains moving. Then every once in a while, they try to catch you off guard with a deep route. That's what they will do. They got Rashawn Caesar behind Bryce, the safety, seven points. And I know we focused a lot on Georgia Southern and rightfully so. They're trying to make history here tonight run the conference table, win the outright conference championship. But I think something has to be said about ULM as well. They had a six-game losing streak after falling to their rivals, the Sun Belt game of the week that you and I did against yep. UL Lafayette. They have responded by winning on the road at New Mexico State, and they are leading here at Georgia Southern at the half. Well, and look, they can't win the conference championship tonight, but they can have a say in who the conference champion is with them win tonight. So, uh... You know, because of all the seniors they got on that team, they're looking to go out with a bang here and play some great football. Monte Crockett standing deep for the Eagles. Number 17, and Justin so is Manton Derek Keaton. And Justin Manton, Manton, who Monte had a touchback on all six of his kickoffs center. last week at New Mexico State, tees it up and lets it go. Crockett backing up will bring it out from three yards deep. And Crockett with a lane. Crockett finally on the ground at the 45-yard line and a flag down on the field following the tackle by Trey Hunter. And we'll check the call from our officials here tonight and our referee, Tony Backer. Number 10, Vegas Harley was in the vicinity of where that, that penalty happened. I wasn't able to see if he had a holding penalty or not. We'll see what the flag is. Holding. holding. On the return team, 10 yards from the spot of the foul. First down. So another very costly penalty here on the Georgia Southern Eagles. And here's the problem with that. That was so far away from the play that it had no bearing at all in that return. And again, Vegas Harley commits a penalty that, that wasn't even necessary. 
ends up being, in essence, a 25-yard penalty. So instead of having the ball at the 45, they have it back at their 20. Well, and here's the thing, too, Matt. They, they, you know, come out in the second half after a little bit of a sluggish first half, big return, crowds back in it, right? Starting to get the juice going in here, and then you get a penalty. They go back 10 yards, and uh, now all the air seems to be sucked back out of the stadium. Kevin Ellison, 5 of 9 passing for 66 yards in the first half. More damage done with his legs. Pitches right there to Brita, and Brita up to the 26-yard line, 27-yard line. Ellison, Ellison 11 Brita. carries for 59 yards in the first Brita. half. Brita, 12 carries for 35 yards. And Brita's a guy, again, he's, he has 1,400 yards on the season. He's only 34 in the first half. He's a guy that uh, has got to get going a little bit and start being a part of this run game. That was a six-yard pickup on their first carry of the second half, second down and four. doing on the run right there. And, uh, Jared two, Johnson uh, Ramsby. swallows up Johnson. Ramsby at the 28. Third down and two coming up. Warhawks have really done a good job, especially in short yardage situations here so far tonight. Well, they really I ran into Alex Atkins, the offensive line coach for Georgia Southern last night at the hotel, and he was talking about Jaron Johnson saying, we got to find a way to neutralize this guy. But it, so far, Jaron Johnson's done a great job with that point of attack on the interior part of that line. You see right there, number 76, wrapping up a ball carrier. <laughs> Looks like there might have been a face, pass, face mask on Michael Johnson that the officials missed. Kevin Ellison on the run is able to get it with a second effort. Looked like he might be caught behind the line Kevin of scrimmage. Ellison, and Ellison able keeper. to find a running lane Lorenzo and pick up the first down at the 32. That's frustrating for ULM. They had a great job of coverage on the back end and just left just a little bit of a window there for Ellison to squeak through and pick up the first down. Ellison, a two-time Sunbelt Conference Offensive Player of the Week. First time when he led the Eagles to a near upset at Georgia Tech. In fact, Prior to their loss to Navy two weeks ago, they only had two losses on the season, both to ACC teams on the road, NC State and Georgia Tech, by a combined five points. Brita swallowed up, man. No running room for Brita right there. That was Lorenzo Jackson making the tackle. Jackson with his Brita. fifth tackle of the ball game. You can see, look at this guy stacking the line of scrimmage. Linebackers are about three no yards off the, the ball, play. four down linemen Second on the line of scrimmage. Remember, we were... Coach talked about it. They're going to try to say, hey, look, we're going to make them beat us with the pass and try to take this run away, and so far I've done a decent job. And look at the tackle totals for their defensive line from their three guys down linemen, 12 tackles from those guys in this ballgame. Heavy rush, Ellison steps up, and he's going to be sacked back at the 22-yard line. Jaron Johnson and Michael Jaren Johnson team up to drop Ellison for a big Jaren loss. Johnson. And it was just the relentless play of Jaron Johnson on that play. Watch here. It was the left guard, McBurnett, who just finally just gives up. You can see he opens up the gate the right there and allows Jaron Johnson to get through. Eagles. Here's another good look. at Just a nice swim move. Good job with the club and then the rip over the top. Jaron Johnson is a heck of a play. Six-plus sacks for both Jaron Johnson and Michael Johnson now this season. Now it's third down and 17. Ellison running to his left, throwing on the run, and gets the ball beyond the sticks. Nice job on the completion to B.J. Johnson. Ellison throwing across his body, picks up the first down. And how does that happen? The quarterback, Trey Caldwell, was out there, but if the wide receiver gets past the sticks, you got to close on him. And Caldwell did. I don't quite understand what was going on there. I don't know if he was just distracted by the run option there of, of Kevin Ellison, but look, you can see wide receiver Johnson sets up about a yard past the sticks. Caldwell was not close enough to him to make a play on the ball. So on a third and 17, the Eagles convert first and 10 now from the 43. Back-to-back -back pass attempts, Ellison will run it. First down for Ellison to the 45-yard line. Yeah, the Darryl Smith, the back keeper, finally making the tackle. Smith, but Ellison down. downfield picks up the first. He had control of showers on Brady open down. down the flat. We'll get a look at the replay. Here she showers, showers coming in. He was open, but just the pressure by ULM forced Ellison to tuck it just before he could throw it. But a nice job picking up the first down. Man down for the Warhawks at the 39-yard line. That was actually the third consecutive 
play in which they lined up to pass the ball. They've actually only passed it once. They took a sack, <laughs> got a completion, and then Ellis in the run for the first down. And a timeout as they tend to the Warhawk at the 39-yard line. Four minutes into the third quarter. Eagles driving, but still down four. Todd Berry's team in this defense putting up a game effort here tonight as they lead Georgia Southern 7-3 in the third quarter. Let's check in with Danielle Percival down on the sideline. Well, guys, coming into tonight, ULM's defense had 35 sacks this season. That's the most they've had during their time in the Sun Belt Conference. They had 19 more than they had last season coming into tonight. And, of course, you saw the big one there on that last drive. Now, Georgia Southern continuing to drive. But, again, you mentioned it, this ULM defense has really been key tonight. Well, they really have. He, Daniel mentioned the 35 sacks come in, also 85 tackles for loss. And he, here's what I'm seeing tonight. Early on in the game, obviously, Georgia Southern gets the ball back. They go 16 plays, 62 yards, had to settle for a field goal. But they were moving the ball pretty well. But you think back to what Todd Berry told us during the week. He said, hey, during this game, they're going to come out with some looks, come out with some wrinkles we haven't seen. It looks like they found a way to correct that a little bit and, and, and shore up that defense more so far, especially in the second quarter and so far in the third quarter. So first down and 10, ball at the 45-yard line. Willie Fritz told us, Rocky, that the story of this ball game would be how well the Eagles were able to get bodies on the Warhawks' body. So how well have they done th tonight? Well, not a good job. You, we talked about the front line for ULM defensively is making a ton of tackles. Ellison keeps the ball. Lane gets him on the ground. Kevin Lane Ellison Kissinger over there making that tackle. Lane now with nine tackles. Kissinger's got six. Well, we said he had to come up big there. You see him in the middle of your screen. Watch this dead sprint. Finds the ball. And look at just the closing speed right there. See, he's a guy, Ellison, you can't attack too quickly because he can pitch that ball out real quick. Nice job of, of Lane there, feathering that out and then shooting his gun right the last second. Mitch Lane, along with the Eagles' Matt Dobson, one of two Sunbelt players to have two defensive touchdowns this season, only two of 14 players in all of FBS that have done that. Ellison, play action, going over the top for Showers, and Showers gets tripped by Pipkins on the play, and there's no play. There certainly was contact, feet on feet contact, but the officials keep the flag in the pocket. You know the poor job by Ranger Pipkins playing playing that ball, came up way too shallow, and then definitely tripped up the wide receiver. We'll take a look at it. Looks like we may not get a, get a look at the replay here. All right, here we go. Good play action fake. Elson in the, in the back of the pocket right there. He put, he's, he has hands on the wide receiver yeah. control shower. That should have been a penalty, man. And I'm not a guy that, that cries for defensive penalties. That should have been thrown. Third down now. Ellison scrambling. He's under a heavy rush, dancing around, and he's in trouble. Kissinger's got him. Ellison gets rid of it. And was there anybody out there? And he was outside of the tackle box. They probably could have thrown a, a, a grounding call on that one. Or was he outside? If he was outside yeah. the tackle box, then he's okay. Well, that's the thing. He got outside the tackle box, it looked like to me. Todd Barry's trying to, trying to make a case that he did not. Looked to me as though he did that. And what we mean by the tackle box is there's not really a box, but outside of where the tackle's lined up in the line of scrimmage, there's kind of an imaginary box. And it does look like he was outside that, so a good call or non-call by the officials. Fourth and seven, they're going for it again. They're one for three on fourth downs in this ballgame. And a quick kick, if you want to call it a kick. It does go downfield, and it does roll, and it is effective, and the ball rolls dead at the nine-yard line. Well, you said that was effective. I, I thought I was saying, wow, they're going to go for it again on fourth and seven. That was the right call. Look, try to pin ULM back deep. Defense is playing pretty well. See if they can get a stop. That's some old-school quick kick right there on fourth down, and Ellison does his job. Was it not picturesque? Certainly had a little arc on the ball, but a line drive kick that rolls dead and puts the Warhawks in a hole at their nine-yard line. So first and ten for ULM. They still have a 7-3 lead, five and a half minutes into this third quarter. Centarius Donald on the carry. And tackled by Bernard Dawson, the defensive end. 
tackle made for the Eagles by Bernard Dawson. Donald, three carries for 22 yards in this ballgame. And that wasn't the worst run in the world, it's for, especially by ULM standards who struggles to run the ball. They'll take second and six here. Negative six yards rushing for the Warhawks in this ball game when you factor in the sacks. Started off bunched up there, and then Pete made a call, and they split out wide. I wonder if there is no flag on the play. The defense did not touch the offense. Let me correct myself. 23 yards rushing, not negative six. I was looking at the wrong column there, just looking at the negative yards. But 23 yards on eight carries officially rushing for the Warhawks in this ball game. Second down and six. Southern showing pressure here. I'll start here. Number 70. That's the left guard, Frank Sutton. And Frank Sutton's one of those, he's a true freshman, one of those guys that came in as the offensive line wasn't playing well. That brought some other opportunities for. Some of those young guys, one of them being Frank Sutton. Took over when 30 games started. Demir Burkett was uh, injured against Kentucky. Second down. And 10 now, a little bit more than 10 right now. Thomas out of the end zone to Kane. And Kane up to the 16-yard line. About three yards shy of the first down. That was a nice job. Georgia Southern was playing cover two right there, trying to keep everything in front of them like they do so often. But Pete Thomas found a little bit of a window. So he hit the wide receiver. Now he's got to come up big for the three. That's in the replay. Just a little arrow out there by Kane. But a good job of Georgia Southern rallying the ball and tackling. So yards after the catch by ULM is going to kill Georgia Southern. Thomas, 12 of 21 for 153. 63 of that 153 came on one play for the touchdown. Thomas, heavy rush. He's being chased by Williams. Throws. It's complete to Kenzie Jackson, who had to come back and I think came inside the sticks and tried to reach back and did not get the first down. You see where the spot is here. Referee's going to spot the ball. It's definitely short. They're going to be forced to punt. He had to come back because Pete Thomas was in trouble. He had to come back on the route to help him out and then could not get back to the sticks, Rocky. Yeah, and Pete Thomas just narrowly gets away from Anton Williams, the blitzing linebacker. Kenzie Jackson, if he had been able to maintain possession where he initially laid fingers on the ball, it would have been a first down. But by the time he shored up the catch, he was short of the stick. Keaton deep for the Eagles and Manton Hunting from the three. Keaton has it hit in front of him at the 40-yard line, and that was a bad mistake by Keaton because it takes a 16-yard bounce. He should have come up with the Warhawks. Caught I mean, that ball, yeah. Why didn't he call fair catch and make that catch at the 40-yard line? You never know. I mean, I, I, that's a tough job those punt returners have to. But that's a situation, a critical game. Look, that cost them what 15 plus yards in field position. Eagles at their 26 when we get back. Back at Paulson Stadium, ULM still on top of Georgia Southern 7-3. Matt Stewart, Rocky Boyman, and Danielle Percival. And how about Mitch Lane tonight, Rocky? Nine tackles, tackle for lost to spearhead this ULM defense. Well, we said he was going to have to come up big in the open. He sure has done a good job, as we talked about, diagnosing all the nuances of this triple option zone read attack, but then also doing this, coming up forceful, making the tackle all game. I believe Mitch Lane has 10 tackles on the game so far. Todd Berry told us this week, even though they were not playing for the championship, ULM wanted to make a statement, show that they belonged in that conversation, even though it's been a rough season, and they have done that so far as we are halfway through this third quarter. They've held the Eagles to three points, and they lead by four as Georgia Southern goes back on offense. Ellison 
right into the teeth of that defense. No running room whatsoever as yeah, Kissinger the makes the tackle keeper. again, and he's got seven tonight. And this is what I was talking about. Early in the game, this, this quarterback draw right Kissinger. up the middle was working pretty good, but ULM has done something different defensively. They're keeping the linebackers, Hunter Kissinger and company, a little closer to the line of scrimmage and at home, and not so much luck there on that. Rocky, this is a Georgia Southern offense that averages 40.6 points per game and they have not gotten it in the end zone yet tonight. Ellison complete to B.J. Johnson, and Johnson was hit right away by Cordero Smith, and he's trying to strip the ball as they get him on the ground. The follow-up tackle there by Michael Johnson to finish it off. And they certainly have to pass the ball a lot more than they want to, no question about it. And that was the seventh completion for Ellison out of 13 attempts. But look at that still, there's two, three, now four, five ULM Warhawks coming into your screen. B.J. Johnson with his team leading third catch of the ball game for 27 yards. The ruling on the field was that the receiver caught the ball, fumbled it, and then picked it back up. The play is under review. So the ruling on the field, catch and a fumble, Fumble recovered by the wide receiver B.J. Johnson. Yeah, he dropped it. I guess they're going to take a look at it to see if he actually, actually maintained possession and made the catch before he fumbled it. In real time, it looked as though he did. So Tony Backert going upstairs to get an official review of this call. If it stands, it'll be third down and two for the Eagles. The replay. That's a. That looks like it's a catch to me. Go ahead and keep rolling it. Ball just happens to pop out. Looks like a catch to me. Yeah. Did he make what they call a football move after he <laughs> made the catch? That's always the gray area. Let's take a look on this angle. All right. So he's got the ball in his hands right there. Now, does he make a football move with it? To me, he does. He takes a step with his left foot, and he takes the, the ball really off to the left side of his body. And, and just drops it right there as he's really getting ready to head up field. This is a big review right here because of the difference in a third and two or a third and long. Absolutely. And you know, this offense really does well with third and short, not so much with third and long with the way they run the football much better than pass. Eagles are six of 13 on their third downs in this ball game and one of three on their fourths. They've had 16 third or fourth down conversion attempts compared to the Warhawks' eight, so double. <laughs> they've been on the field a long time. They've run a lot of plays, 54 plays to the Warhawks' 33, yet they still trail by four points. Yeah, everything is more or less going according to game plan except for putting the ball in the end zone. The ULM's done a good job there shoring up in critical situations, third down, fourth down, also in the red zone. The fact that they're taking such a long time on this makes me makes me think they may reverse this. Well, Good here, call. Tony Backert will see what he's got to say. After review, the receiver did maintain control. It'll be an incomplete pass. It will be third down on the 29-yard line. Wow, that changes things dramatically here. Instead of a third down and two, now the Eagles are facing a third down and seven. Well, I, I, I sure didn't didn't see it that, that glaringly different up here. They, they originally called it a catch, and they looked at me on the replay, but officials called the other way. Showers in motion up at the top of your screen. Ellison's looking his way. Ellison's in trouble. And he gets away from a quarterback sack, and he's on the move. Ellison's got a first down, got a great block in the open field. Ellison finally out of bounds at the 44-yard line, and I believe it was B.J. Johnson who threw a great block down here for the Eagles. Matt, just when things were starting to look grim for Georgia Southern, a huge, huge play by Kevin Ellison. Look, he is dead to rights right here. They have everybody and their brother right there getting ready to take him down. But just some fancy footwork again just for a smaller guy. 
just get loose of tackles, hurdles a guy. And Kevin Ellison is taking this game in his hands right now. A 24-yard scramble for Ellison to pick up the first down. And now they've got it in the Warhawks 46-yard line. Ellison looking for the home run over on the far side. It is caught in the 10-yard line. Oh, Trellis showers with the catch, and the Eagles knocking on the door. The showers caught Trey Caldwell and ULM in man-to-man -man coverage, and Caldwell just didn't do a good enough job of getting his head around in time. It's just a streak, streak route down the left side of your, your screen. You see right at the last moment, but you see, Matt, as he looks back, he gets out of phase and loses the wide receiver. And it was actually fortunate the ball was a little bit short. Elton, excuse me, Showers could come back to it, makes the big catch. First and goal to go for Georgia Southern, still looking for their first touchdown of the night, 40 minutes into this game. Ellison looking to the end zone, got nobody there. Now throws throws it away as he was about to take a sack, and that was Kissinger. Kissinger had him in the grass, but he was able to get rid of the ball in time. The safety, Bryce Ray, was there on top of him as well. And wide receivers for Georgia Southern were trying to move back and forth. As Ellison was, was moving out of the pocket there, the wide receivers did what they're taught and just run to the sideline, and then after that just try to get open. But credit ULM defensively for, for being strong in the coverage. Ellison, 7 of 15 for 121 passing, 17 carries for 98 yards rushing. Second down and 10. His big 24-yard scramble on third down. Maybe their biggest offensive play of the game thus far. Ellison run an option inside the five, and he gets into the end zone. And the Eagles find the end zone for the first time tonight. Take their second lead of the night. And that playing defense versus the option is all about assignment football. Watch this play here. There's, here comes the option, but like you'll see back is coming up, but he takes the pitch. There's no one there for the quarterback. There must have been a breakdown defensively. And ULM has played this option attack so well all night. But that's the thing about the triple option, Matt, is you play it right 20, 30 times. One play, a guy doesn't do the right job or be in the right spot, and it busts for a big one. In this case, a touchdown for Kevin Ellison. Ellison with his 12th rushing touchdown of the season. Puts the Eagles on top 9-7 as they help Kissinger off the field. Ellison now with 108 yards rushing tonight. That gives him an even 1,100 yards rushing on the season. Now Hanks will try to make it a three-point game. Seven of 53 on his PATs this season, and he missed that one. Well, there's a flag. The kick is no good. There is a flag on the play. Wow. Let's check the call right here. Eagles walking off the field. It seems to indicate the penalty is going against them. Three-point lead is now just two. And when you have one of the best kickers in the entire yep. nation wearing a white jersey for the other team and Justin Manton, that could be a huge PAT miss before this game is over. Especially in such a low-scoring game like this, lose that one point could come back to haunt Georgia Southern. Here's a call. The extra point is no good. After the play, personal foul. Number 97 of the kicking team. That penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. Wow. It's on the long snap, Justin Bandit. So not only do you have a personal foul, that's a 15-yard markoff on the kick. So not only do they miss the PAT, but the Warhawks should get pretty good field position. But Kevin Ellison gets into the end zone to give the Eagles a 9-7 lead. Well, the personal foul was called on the long snapper, Rocky. You were right. Jake Banton. And he was getting a long conversation over there with the special teams coach during the timeout. 
could be a very costly penalty. Number one, they missed the extra point, number one. That's the number one costly mistake. And number two, we wait to see just how costly this 15-yard mark off. Watch 97 in the middle. Hard to tell exactly what might have happened. That looked like number 10, Cordero Smith, was Well, it looks trying. like as he went up, then Banta comes down and, like, suplexed. I think that was the reason that they called the penalty. I'm not sure why Banta chose to do that. But you're right, Matt. He was certainly getting an earful on the sideline. So what this penalty means is that the Eagles now have to kick off from the 20-yard line, which also means the Warhawks should get great field position after this kickoff. Yeah, that's huge. No extra point. And then 15 yards further, they got to kick this ball. After a great run by Kevin Allison. Boy, Matt, is he on that series yeah. really taking the game into his hand? He had a third down and long play where somehow he escapes a bunch of ULM defenders, gets the first down, and then takes it into his own hands there down the goal line, and then the extra point misses. He absolutely did. That was the Kevin Ellison drive right there. His big 24-yard scramble on a third and long to get the ball across midfield. And from there, he was able to take it in from 10 yards out for the touchdown. The first touchdown of the night for the Eagles in what has been an unexpected defensive battle. The kick is going to fall into no man's land and go out of bounds. And give him another 10 yards, Matt, for the ball going out of bounds. Young Way Coos kick goes out of bounds. Ball's going to be. Well, here's another look at Kevin Ellison on that last drive. This is the 24-yard scramble that really was the centerpiece of that scoring drive. Yeah, and I don't know how he got away from everybody on that one. Look at that thing, hurdling the defender there. And this was the big pass play to Kentrellis Showers. Been ball just a little bit overthrown, but a great job of seeing the ball in the air by the senior Showers. And then here's the touchdown again. ULM did a nice job defending, except for they had no one for the quarterback. Justin Backus goes to Matt Breida on the pitch. Kevin Ellison well, sees the lane and right, he makes the right call and he takes it in. So just how costly was that pen penalty on Fanta? ULM, after the ball is kicked out of bounds, takes over at the 50-yard line. Ball start. Number 70 on the offense. Five-yard penalty, first down. Frank Sutton called for his second penalty on the line of scrimmage for a false start. And before the penalty, I mean, really, the kicking the ball out of bounds and then the unsportsmanlike penalty gave really 30 yards of field position to UM before they just gave five back. So first and 10 from the 45 yard line. Thomas complete to Kenzie Jackson. Jackson out of bounds at the 46, picked up That's four on the number 23, Kenzie Jackson. That's the ninth Jones, catch of the ball game for Kenzie Jackson. 13 a week ago against New Mexico State. Really taking advantage of the coverage. Now, a Jalen Holly is a guy that we have not even called Holly's name the entire night. Holly lined up. He's the guy very tip top of your screen. Holly leads this team in receiving yards with 813 yards receiving, 74 a game. He has not touched the ball tonight. Sean Caesar, the intended target. And on that play, Holly basically serves as a decoy. He runs to the sideline and stands there. But Holly has not gotten the ball thrown his way so far tonight, but that's been to the benefit of Kinsey Jackson. When they caught Georgia Southern playing man to man coverage, which they don't do that often, but he was double covered. Deion Stanley, cornerback. So Georgia Southern had some nice coverage, and the ball also wasn't, wasn't really right on the mark. Third down and six. Holly now in motion, coming set near the line. They throw to Kane instead out of the backfield, and Kane close to a first down, depending upon where they spot it. I thought he got to the 40, but I don't know. He gets to the 40, it's a first down. And it looks like he's got it. He will move the sticks with that pass completion right there. He was close. Matt Dobson did a nice job, bam, coming up there, trying to force Kane there out of bounds before he picked up the, the first down. But they go ahead and give us forward progress. First and 10 Warhawks. Pete Thomas closing in on the single season passing record here. 
And that is a completion to Kenzie Jackson right there. If Georgia Southern keeps doing this defensively, again, the, the, the bend but don't break kind of philosophy, I get it. But what Pete Thomas has to counter doing is what he's doing right now, and that's completing these passes. They're going to give him those easy routes. He's got to complete them. And on this drive, he's been pretty good. Kenzie Jackson with his 10th catch of the ball game. Pete Thomas now just two yards shy of setting the single season passing record for ULM in his one and only season with the Warhawks. At some point, Matt, they're going to go back up top. He's at 3,047 yards. That's the record. That's a catch. And that's a touchdown by a Jalen Holly. First time they've gone to him. They shut out the entire night. They hit a big gainer for Holly for six. That's what we talking about, Matt. Just. Is the game plan is very simple. Stopping it has been the problem for Georgia Southern. Lots of easy passes. Again, high percentage. Just get him the ball. And just when you're about to lull him to sleep, hits, hits Holly deep down the sideline for the touchdown. Wow. A Jalen Holly with his seventh touchdown grab of the season. Second touchdown pass of the night for Thomas. And the Warhawks. We're going to go for two here to make it a six-point game because a five-point game really doesn't do much for you. Thomas going to run. He's not going to get there. Two-point conversion attempt fails. Antoine Williams two, making the tackle. Failed. And the score will remain 13-9. Number 37, Antoine Williams. Pete Thomas, a 36-yard scoring strike to a Jalen Holly. And they caught him in man-to-man -man coverage, Matt. And see, here's the problem. There's Nick Wright in man-to-man, -man, but man-to-man -man isn't what Georgia Southern does. They play a lot of zones. So when they're at a point in the game where the offense doesn't have a big lead, it forces you to do something defensively. That's not really your identity. That's play man-to-man. -man. And credit Pete Thomas for hitting the wide open guy. Well, what a big pass for Pete Thomas. With that pass, he sets the single-season passing record now breaking the record previously held by Colton Browning. He's broken Colton Browning's single season completion record here tonight. He's broken John Holman's pass attempts single season record here tonight. And he's put the Warhawks back on top with just over 17 minutes left in this game, trying to deny Georgia Southern the outright championship. And I can't help but feel the irony here Last week, App State, Georgia Southern's biggest rival, did the Eagles a favor by beating the Raging Cajuns. And tonight, the Warhawks, the Raging Cajuns' biggest rival, trying to do them a favor by giving them a share of the championship by beating Georgia Southern. I'll tell you what, this is what makes this Sun Belt Conference so much fun this year. I mean, a, a lot of you know, teams that start off hot, and then, you know, like App State, they start off terrible, and they put together six straight. And here comes ULM, who's really just had a tough season. I said earlier, lose four straight games by a combined 18 points. But Todd Bear did not. Now, he had a quiet confidence about him this week when we were talking to him. He knew his team was going to come out and play hard, and they have so far tonight. So now the Eagles find themselves back down again after scoring their first touchdown of the night. Keaton retreats into the end zone and takes a knee. So the Eagles will take over at the 25-yard line with two minutes and 40 seconds left in this quarter. Another look at that score. He did just poor job there of Wright getting back over the top there and man-to-man -man coverage, letting the wide receiver get behind him. And, and that's the pass play that Pete Thomas, as we see him there on the sideline, just, just wasn't hitting often enough this season. You know, hitting that big play, struggled with his accuracy at times, but here tonight he's hit a couple of big ones. 17 of 27, 210 yards and a couple of touchdown passes for Pete Thomas, a 63-yard score to Caesar and a 36-yard score to Holly. Now the Eagles back on offense. And trailing once again, pitch goes to Breida. Breida got a block out there, and then a nice open field tackle by Kissinger, who's been all over the place. Five-yard pickup as Kissinger now has eight tackles tonight. And Troy Palomalu here. <laughs> That's right. Gillum did a nice job just getting right in the chops of Kevin Ellison, forcing him to pitch that ball a little sooner than he wanted. Second down and five. Showers in motion up at the top of your screen, and Brita gets the carry. Man, he runs into a brick wall. Nothing doing right there. Goes to Matthew Brita. 
Kissinger again, plugging the hole. And you know what I'm saying? Look, you're not going to run it up the middle here. If you want to make some hay, you're going to have to do it to the outside, and they have tonight, but you get a look at the replay here. Look, see the stun by the defensive lineman shooting gaps. It really just muddies the picture mm. for the offensive line, and then Hunter Kissinger comes up with a perfect form tackle. I was getting ready to say, you got to love that. That was <laughs> textbook right there, plugging the hole. Third down and short down for the Eagles. Rita gets another chance at it. Man, it's else? Kissinger again. Step right into the hole, lowered his helmet, and, uh, puts the shoulder pads Brita. right on Brita and stops him on third Tangled down and short. And now it's fourth down and short. And what you're seeing at times, again, with all the slanting and stunning and things the defensive line is doing, it's, it's creating a little bit of hesitation for Matt Brita. Watch this guy. Look, down, you see the, the, the tackles are scooping around and just a little bit of hesitation by Brita. And then there's Hunter Kissinger right there ready to make the tackle. Warhawks Ryan defense Wiki been balling tonight. Nowicki on the punt, standing at his 19-yard line. For the so three and out for the Eagles. As we are now inside the final minute of the third quarter. Nowicki lets it go. Caesar calls fair catch and makes it at the 28-yard line, and that's where the Warhawks go back on offense with 39 seconds left in the quarter. What a stunner developing here in Statesboro tonight on the final Saturday of November on a night where the Eagles had a chance to claim the outright conference championship. They are in a battle and trailing by four as we are on the verge of entering the fourth quarter. ULM has come to play. And Pete Thomas, uh, again, such a tough year. They changed the, uh, the philosophy, the identity up of the offense. He thought he was coming to a, a run, play, action, pass center team. They changed it up. He struggled a little bit at times. For the last couple weeks, he looks like he's got it down. Centarius Donald, they've been very judicious on his carries here tonight. Remember, he's been banged up, was doubtful the whole week, and it looks like he's hurt again. He had an upper body injury against the Aggies. Looks like he's perhaps favoring that as he goes to the sideline here. It looks to be that right shoulder, right arm, something, uh, something wrong with that. That's it. That's the end of the third quarter. 45 minutes done in Statesboro. ULM trying to pull off a stunning upset and drop Georgia Southern into a share of the championship with their rivals, UL Lafayette. After 45 minutes, the stubborn Warhawks defense has shut down the Eagles from keeping them out of the end zone, but just once. And it's 13 to nine as we head to the fourth. Well, we had the opportunity to pick up one of these copies of the plan to win for Georgia Southern. Now, a couple of these items have been really struggles for the Eagles tonight. I wanted to win the kicking game and also eliminate those pre-snap and post-play penalties. Two things they've struggled with so far, but that final thing is to win the fourth quarter. And if they're going to be the outright conference championships, they're going to have to do that tonight. Thank you, Danielle. As we start the fourth quarter, Danielle Percival down on the sidelines, Matt Stewart and Rocky Boyman. And Thanks for joining us the entire season. We've had the great pleasure to work the Sunbelt Conference Game of the Week the entire year. And what a way to wrap up the schedule here tonight with the conference championship on the line and UL Monroe trying to pull off a stunning upset. 13-9 lead for the Warhawks. And defensively, Georgia Southern is going to have to start getting more aggressive. Again, they like to sit back and cover two, but at some point they're going to have to start challenging these wide receivers. They can't just allow Pete Thomas to keep completing these short passes all the rest of the game. Georgia Southern with a 4-0 record at home this season, a five-game home winning streak, and Pete Thomas is going to go down at the 35-yard line. Big Jay Ellison with his third quarterback sack of the season. And Thomas is sacked by number 99. Jay, Jay Ellison, Ellison, how about him? Six foot one, 305, just a sophomore. He can be playing some, some nice ball around here for a long, long time. You see... Good job of coverage, and Pete Thomas tries to get four, but nice job by Jordan Southern just constricting that run lane just as Pete Thomas thought he had an opening. You know, I'm not quite sure I know what 305 looks like, but I don't think it's that small. <laughs> yeah, he, I, I think he, he may be fibbing a little bit on that, uh, that stat sheet. Uh, that, that was 305 <laughs> in August. I mean, he's been at the training table for a while now. Pass is thrown complete. Oh, big mistake right there. Did a little stutter step, and Kane got dropped in his track. Antoine Williams. How about Antoine? Well, look at that war club he has on his left hand. He's been playing that with that for the last couple of weeks. They try to get the ball out to Kane, and here comes the cavalry right there. Nice job. Form tackle 
by Antoine Williams. Again, doing that with one hand, one hand Matt. How about yeah, that? Look at that. Man, I've played with one of those, Matt. That is not fun. That is not a fun day on a football field having to play with a club. Do you ever want to wrap a brick up Everybody in that thing? I wanted, to, I wanted to wrap anything around it rather than play with one hand. Punt is blocked. They got to the punt by Manton. And the ball rolls dead at the 40-yard line. And the Eagles special teams comes up with a big play. Deshaunte Gallon with the block. And Georgia Southern will take over in ULM territory. Clean snap, clean hold. Operation just looked like it took a little bit too long. Too long. Yep. And how about Georgia Southern? They have the critical error on special teams a little ways ago there with the, the penalty on the extra point that forced the long yards. But now special teams coming back and making a big play. Deshanti Gallon with the block. Didn't get all of it, but got enough of it. And the Eagles take over at the 40-yard line of the Warhawks. As Willie Fritz told us, they want to leave no doubt, win this conference championship outright, and now they take over 40 yards from the end zone. Ellison scrambling, throwing, and downfield ball. Was it caught at the 21? It's incomplete. Shower says he caught it. The officials there on the spot said he didn't. You can see he says, I still had it. When it was just a two-man route, they caught ULM in man-to-man. -man. Kevin Ellison probably would have had a little bit more time to make a better throw, but just some pressure at the end. Four showers up, and we'll try to look at the replay here. Yeah, that looks like that, uh, you know, he got his arms around it, no doubt about it, but I think there was some of that ball on the ground as yeah, well. it looks like the ground uh, assisted. Now, obviously, the ball can hit the ground as long as it doesn't help <laughs> in the catch. It looked on, on that first look at that replay. That it wasn't a catch. So second down and 10 from the 40. Yeah, they're going to take a look at this. Yeah. Timeout is called by Willie Fritz. He wants the officials to take a nice long look timeout. at it. Georgia Southern. That is our first timeout of the half. And I think at this point in the game, Matt, that, that's a, a, a nice call right there by Willie Fritz to take a shot. And seeing if that'll get overturned. I don't know. I don't know that I agree with you on that because I know they're down only four, I know. But when you're down in the fourth quarter, I want to hold my timeouts for defense. That's true. And they still have two left. So I had to head just two. Now I'm trying to find out if Willie Fritz officially challenged or if he just called the timeout. I know they're taking a look at it. Meantime, here to figure out what they're doing. Let's uh, try to get a look at this. Right there, it looks like the ball hit the ground. It looked, yeah, it looked as if he trapped the ball there from, from that angle in this, in this piece. There. And remember, the call on the field is incompletion, right. so the evidence has, has to, to overturn yeah. an incompletion. It has to be that he made the catch. And it did look like on that replay that there was, you know, there was brown football and green grass right there together. Tony Backer, 40 years as an official. This is his final college football game. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed as an incomplete pass. And I think the video evidence left them no alternative but to uphold the call. Right, exactly. There wasn't enough evidence to, to overturn that call. It was, it was close enough. And, you know, as I like to say, that, that repl when they replay to overturn something, it should just pop off the screen. That certainly did not, and that was the right call. So second down and 10. Now, did Georgia Southern call a timeout there? The scoreboard says they still have three remaining. Or did the officials call the timeout to review the play? Pass downfield to Marina. Touchdown. And a flag down at the 47. Georgia Southern. There is a flag. And it's coming back. It's going to be a holding call on Georgia Southern. 
on the center, Manry St. Amour. Now they sneak Matt Breida out of the backfield. Ellison hits him with a perfect pass and it's coming back. Wow. It's just an incredible mistake tonight in a long time. Well, this is the costliest penalty yet. See, there's 75 right there. You see the hook and then bringing him to the ground. Anytime those hands are out like that, that's going to bring the flag, unfortunately. Lorenzo Jackson, the defensive end for the Warhawks, had his man beat, and Man Ray St. Amour, the senior center, one of the 22 seniors playing their final game at Pawson tonight, got flagged. Takes a touchdown off the board. And now it's second down and 20 at the 50. Ellison throws this way. That's complete. Keaton, ball is out. And it is scooped by the Warhawks. They're going to rule it incomplete. And that's a break for Georgia Southern. That's one of the few times where Georgia Southern says, yeah, that was an incompletion. <laughs> that's right. Uh, we didn't catch that. Oh. That was incomplete. a bang, bang play. And it looked like Trey Caldwell has scooped that ball up and he's going to head for six. Get a look at the replay here. And, you know, he's just trying to fight for extra yards there. And a good job by ULM just... Kind of fall away, but yeah, forced the completion. Kind of similar to the play back in the third quarter where BJ Johnson got stripped right after he caught it, and the and then on that situation they overturned the call on the field, which was a completion. They called it an incomplete. Third down now. Ellison stands in the pocket, fires down the field, complete to Zach Walker, and Zach Walker to the 35 gets 15 of it back, and now it's going to be fourth down and five. And Kevin Ellison and Ellison's is down. Hurt. Ellison, I don't, I did not see, but he obviously took a big shot back at the 39-yard line, and that means that Fabian Upshaw would be coming into the game. It looked like it was big number 76, Jaron Johnson. We'll see. Great poise, great job of Kevin Ellison with the pressure in his face. Yeah, just rising and reached that ball there. It looked like Jaron Johnson got into his grill there a bit. But a, look, a nice job by the sophomore quarterback of hanging tough in that pocket and delivering the ball, and he's up now. Looks to be okay. But what that brings up here is a fourth down and five, and you're bringing in a new quarterback, right. Fabian Upshaw, who hasn't played since the first half. Now, the thing that's interesting, though, is Fabian Upshaw has a lot of touches on the year. So it's not like he's, you know, hasn't hasn't played much, which is which is why Willie Fritz does this. He, he rotates the quarterback some just to give, in case of an injury situation, Fabian Upshaw has some, some plays under his belt. Yagut comes in, the third team quarterback. What is this? Yuke will take the snap from the 40-yard line and run and pick up the first down. How about that? Is he a youth on the carry? He's a youth, the senior Man, running back, the third team down. quarterback. They go with him instead of Upshaw, and he picks up the first down. You, you, who, who is this guy, Matt? Third string quarterback comes in, and wow, just a bad missed tackle by ULM on that play. Let's get another look at this angle. And right there, it looked like, see, Mitch Lane overran that football a little bit, Matt, and a great job by Yuyo just cutting it back across the grain. Huge play by the third-string quarterback. Ellison comes right back in the ball game, and now he's running option. Ellison behind his blocker, cuts back, gets shot down. Kevin Ellison Kissinger with his keeper. 11th tackle of the night. It'll be interesting to find out Jared if we Johnson can what, why Fourth Upshaw quarter. was not the guy that came in. There. Yeah, we, we've not gotten any word up here that something is Lots wrong uh, injury-wise with Fabian Upshaw. We just assumed he'd be the guy coming in. We've seen him multiple times this game. Yeah, he even had a 48-yard run yeah. during this game. It'll be interesting to find out at some point while you came into the ball game and not Upshaw there. Ellison back to pass, stands in, fires to Showers and through his hands. Pass intended Pipkins for control Showers. With the coverage. That's a dangerous ball. You all had nice coverage. Lindsey Pipkins Incomplete. in nice position on that ball. There's also Lindsay a defender Pipkins. underneath. It's, it's, he's lucky he threw that ball high because there was a ULM defender underneath. See right there, yeah, yeah. there was Justin Backus. If that ball mat was about six, six feet off the ground, that would have been picked. That was fortunate it was high. So third down and 14. Ellison runs into his own man. 
Wow. Kevin you get a look at the replay. It looked like he had more room off to his right. He decided to keep that, that thing real Lorenzo tight Jackson inside. And there's Jaron Johnson. Is, here's a good angle here. Runs right into Raymond Kluge. Yeah, yeah. And it was just a good job of, of ULM forcing the issue there. I thought he may have had a little bit of room had he bounced it to the outside. But now here we go, fourth and 14. Fourth down, 14, and they're going for it. Obviously, with the way they're kicking, this is probably the right call here. Ellison, heavy rush, gets away, throws, and it's picked at the five-yard line by Lane, a flag out at the seven or eight, and Ellison on his back again. There is a flag on the play. B.J. Johnson, I think, is making a case that Trey Caldwell, ULM's corner, was holding on that play. That's around the area where the flag came out. And Ellison gets flattened again. Ellison has stood in there. Holding. Holding. Number wow. 34 on the defense. Huge. Ten yards from the previous spot. The Warhawks, first down. That is an automatic first down for the Eagles. And, and the, he was nowhere near the play. That was, that was the issue, at least from what I saw initially here. I mean, he just throws that ball up. There's not a, a blue jersey in sight here. Ellison again takes a big hit on the pass rush by Kissinger and by Jaron Johnson. You don't want Jaron Johnson to fall on top no. of him. We've just got a report that Upshaw's not hurt. Apparently just a coach's decision to go with UU there. You know, and that's one of the situations there with UU. They, they, they probably give him, say, three plays in a critical situation and say, hey, in, in, in a, when the game's on the line, you need to master this play, and they did a good job on that one. Okay, so now the question is, and you Utes in the huddle, they're bringing him back out. He's going to run the plays here when because Ellison's got to come back out of the ball game. So while they tend to Ellison, we'll take a timeout. You Ute will be the quarterback. First and 10 for the Eagles at the Warhawks 12 when we get back. Kevin Ellison being tended to over on the Georgia Southern sideline will effort to get a report on his health status from Danielle Percival as soon as we can. Meantime, the situation, first and 10 for the Eagles at the Warhawks 12-yard line, and senior is a Ute, the third-team quarterback, back in there for a second play. He has only six rushing attempts on the season, Rocky, and no pass attempts. And he also wasn't listed on the depth chart. You, you got to wonder, Matt, was that a little bit of gamesmanship uh, there by Georgia Southern keeping him off if he was going to make an appearance in this game? But Ute is over his career, has done a good job in the option. He was really, really explosive, as we've seen on that long run earlier. So first and 10, his only real action this season came in the route of Savannah State and the route of Georgia State. Yuyut on the carry, cuts inside, and Yuyut running hard down to the nine-yard line. Yuyut picks up four on the play. He runs tough, and how about that, a senior? One of 21 seniors on this team coming out, hasn't played a ton this year, but he may be the, the difference maker in this ball game tonight for the championship. Second down and six. Yu trying to finish off this drive for Kevin Ellison, who's hurt, and put the Eagles back on top. Down to the one yard line is a you, you. what a story. Jaron Johnson keeps him from getting into the end zone and so does Mitch Lane, but he you close to a first down at the one. He fakes the pass there, but there, there's no intention to throw a pass, I don't think, with you, you at this point, but doing a nice job there. Again, very explosive on the interior part of that line. And now another man down on the field for Georgia Southern at the four yard line. And these kids are battling out there tonight, Matt, right? Looks like Trevor McBurnett. And they're already down Logan Daves, the senior right guard from Fannin County. He was unable to play. He was injured in the Navy game. And they were going to see if he could play tonight. And I saw him down on the sideline earlier this evening with no shoulder pads on. And so McBurnett, who started eight games a year ago and basically has been their third guard yeah. rotating in and out of there. Now he's going to have to come out of the ballgame, so we'll wait and see who comes in at guard. 
Because as far as I can tell, according to my depth chart, they have one healthy guard right now, and that's Darian Foreman, number 63. And they're going to have to shuffle this offensive line around a little bit. So let's see who lines up at right guard. It looks like Tommy Boyne. I, I believe I saw 77 yeah. come into the game. And he is a freshman. A freshman at a Mandarin High School in Jacksonville, right down the I-95 coast. First and goal to go. And, and stopped at the one-yard line. They run right behind the freshman. Threw him right into the play. fire, didn't they? Yeah, they did. Rita got stopped at the half-yard line. Second down, clock ticks down to nine minutes. Will be less than that when the Eagles snap the ball again. This is usually the area of the field where they like L.A. Ramsey, but so far it's Rita out there. Showers in motion. Breida gets the ball again, and Breida gets into the end zone. He gets a big bear hug from Man Ray St. Amour. And the Eagles on top, 15 to 13. So an offside penalty against ULM, and obviously the Eagles will decline. And Georgia Southern has a two-point lead. Nothing fancy about this, and this is hat on hat. Remember we talked about they like the zone run? That was a man-to-man, body-on-a-body. Let's get some push here and credit Georgia Southern, that senior-laden offensive line with a few, few freshmen there making some contributions, is able to get Breida in for the touchdown. Matt Breida with his 17th touchdown run of the season. And Hanks misses another one. And again, the scenario here, Matt, with... And pardon me, that was not Hanks. That was the backup kicker, the kickoff man, Young Way Koo, who missed the PAT. And there's Matt Breida saying, you've got to be kidding me here. Miss another extra point. Wow. Door left open for the Warhawks. Well, an update on quarterback Kevin Ellison, who was brought to the sidelines. They took him back to the trainer's table and were examining that right knee. Now, after looking at it for a couple of moments, they did decide to put a brace on him, but it does appear that he will be able to get back in this ballgame. Thank you, Danielle. And they will need him, although is a Yuyut. What a big story as he drives them, finishes off the drive, and the third-team quarterback puts the Eagles back on top. But a stunning development in that they have now missed Two PATs tonight, leaving the door open for the Warhawks when they have one of the finest kickers in the nation, Justin Manton, who's hit 251 yarders this season. And that's the second time tonight they've been in that scenario where they're getting ready to make a three point game where if it comes down with a wire, Manton has to kick a long field goal, which he's done all year. It's just a tie game, but now being just two points, that uh, could come into play here later. Young Way Koo missed the last PAT after Alex Hanks had missed the previous. The Eagles are back on top by two. And that kickoff will go into the end zone. Kane will not pick it up. And so the ball will come out to the 25-yard line, and that's where the Warhawks go back on offense with eight minutes and 52 seconds left in regulation. Interesting to see defensively what Georgia Southern does. Again, they, they play a lot of cover two, keep the ball in front of them, and you know, at, at times it's worked tonight, but then they've also let some guys get behind them. I'm interested if they decide to stay back now with a two-point lead or try to challenge those wide receivers. Pete Thomas, 205 yards passing in this game, 18 of 28. And off goes Centarius Donald. Edwin Jackson leading the charge for the Georgia Southern Eagles five, right there. Centarius. Edwin Jackson's fired up, Matt. <laughs> Edwin Jackson makes the top more What a game. year he's had. Started the year preseason second team, all Sun Belt. Former walk-on senior out of Westlake High School in Atlanta. Same high school that produced Cam Newton. You might have heard of him. Second down and seven. Tether going to man-to-man -to -man coverage. You see the corners locked up down bottom. 
Thomas throws back the other way to Kane, and that's a first down at the 36. Late flag comes three. in late Tyler in the secondary. Kane. There is a flag on the play. I'm not sure. It looks like Kenzie Jackson may have gotten tackled on that play as he was running a crossing route. If it stands, that's the fifth catch for Kane tonight but for only 20 yards. It looks like it may go against ULM. And you can see Antoine Williams holding up that big club. <laughs> Can't, when you see, you don't even have to see the number. You just see the club, you know it's Antoine Williams. Pass interference. Number 23 on the offense. Kenzie Jackson, you're right, Rodney. Right. Kenzie Jackson was, I didn't see the actual foul, but he was going on a crossing route. He must have pushed off as the defender was coming down to, to man him up. It was a great play call by ULM. They played, saw man-to-man -man coverage, ran off the outside wide receiver and snuck Tyler Kane out into the flat. Would have been a first down if not for the penalty. Second down and seven. The officials still talking this one over as they stand over the ball at the 28-yard line. And now they'll mark it off against the Warhawks. All the way back to the 14. Wow, that is critical. A huge foul. Warhawks got to get to the 35 to the first. Thomas running for his life. Gets rid of it. Holly was out Bethany there, Bethany but Thomas was just trying to save his skin. And a flag down back at the five. This might be holding on the Warhawks. If it is, it's inexcusable because Georgia Southern only rushed two guys on that play. Watch. You see the third guy, 51, Jamal Johnson, drops out at the snap. The foul occurred back toward the left side of the screen. It looked like a couple Warhawk linemen tackled tackled Lenny Richardson personal foul number 71 on the offense that penalty is declined it will be third down number That's 71 the has freshman been right tackle Chase Region has been tossed out of the game wow must have thrown a punch I mean, you got to credit Lenny Richardson for playing relentless. Again, they only rushed two guys on that play. And he's able to cause enough dis disruption where Chase Regent has to commit a penalty. Well, let's see who checks into the ball game at right tackle now that Regent is out. It looks like Jeremy Burton. I think so. Jeremy Burton, number 67, a senior, checks in for Regent. Right next to offensive captain Ben Reisenhuber. Two men. Third down. Thomas steps up to avoid the rush, running for his life. Quarterback sack at the six yard line by Jamal Johnson. His third sack of the season, second sack for the Eagles tonight. And the Warhawks will have to punt out of their own end zone. And this is inexcusable by Pete Thomas. He's a veteran quarterback. He knows better. He's outside the tackle box. Throw the ball away. You cannot take a sack in that situation. Jamal Johnson, Matt, has had a big, a, a, not, not jumping out stat-wise, but had a big game today playing some of that spy technique and right there with a critical sack. Forcing now fourth and 29. And Manton, who had his punt blocked the last time he kicked, stands in the back of his end zone. Trey Butler to return this kick for the Eagles. He has to retreat all the way to his own 41, and he falls down. Wow, what a kick by Manton. Eagles will still have great field position, but Manton, who had his kick partially blocked his last time out, boom, that one across midfield. Actually, that's about 70 yards in the air, Matt. His heels were more or less on the back of the goal line. Todd Berry has told us that every week they've got NFL scouts coming in to look at Manton. Not necessarily as a place kicker, although he has certainly entered 
his name into that aspect of his game as well with his field goal kicking this year, but as a punter, especially. B.J. Johnson in motion. Yayute, or Yayute, pardon me, stands in there at quarterback still for Ellison, who's hurt. Ramsby, Ramsby. Ramsby. What a story that here tonight. The senior, Yise Yayute, has barely broken a sweat this year. Hardly ever gets his uniform dirty. Yeah. Third-team quarterback. When Ellison gets hurt, they go with him over Upshaw. And you got to love this, too. You go a couple years ago, got beat out of the quarterback position, hasn't played in a couple years here, and on senior night, arguably the biggest game in school history here for the Sun Belt title. He comes up and is critical late in the fourth quarter. Ramsby. No, oh, the keeper by Yuyu. There he goes. Foot race. And finally out of bounds at the five yard line. I love college football, man. I will tell you what. A guy. You, you, a guy you didn't even yeah. think was going to make up any presence at all in this game comes up with big play after big play. Wow. So happy for that young man here in his senior year, coming up big on senior night. After coming into this game, had just five carries in three games. Is a Ute. He probably had to wonder, am I going to even get in the ball game on senior night? And here he is playing a huge role in what could be a championship victory for the Eagles. Ramsby into the end zone. Oh, the carry for a touchdown. Georgia Southern. Georgia Southern has just, you know, has made some mistakes throughout the ball game here, but at the critical moments, this team will not quit, Matt. New guys are coming in. Freshmen are stepping up. Third-string quarterbacks are stepping up. And given the Eagles now, it's well, it's a 21 to 13 victory. The, the extra point, we'll see. Koo back out there to try the PAT. And Koo converts. And they got the biggest, the biggest eruption of the crowd all night. I'm sorry. And the crowd goes wild on a PAT. 22 to 13 with 528 to play. Twenty-two to thirteen with five twenty-eight to play. And is a Yute with our bow four play of the game, the 48-yard quarterback run that set up the four-yard touchdown by LA Ramsby. I just feel so so good for that young man down there and the things he's been through. And you know, Matt, these college football players, they, they go through a lot. It's a tough schedule. They lead balancing class and football, the, the challenges that are put on your plate. And again, New York gets, gets beat out a couple of years ago, and then here in the most critical game in a long time, just steps up huge. Our Balfour play of the game, the 48-yard run by Ize Yayou. And how about this? We talked about this off the top, but we talked about Kevin Ellison being the centerpiece of the offense and how integral the quarterback is in this option. Unlike other options where maybe the fullback is yep. the focus guy in this offense, it's the quarterback. Eagle quarterbacks tonight have rushed for 229 yards. Well, and that's what makes it, this offensive attack so hard to stop is because you see Matt Breed, and again, he's you know close to leading the nation in, in rushing yards, so he gets a lot of the attention, but the guy that does a lot of damage is the one that plays the quarterback position, and we're seeing that front and center tonight. Yeah, Brita only 51 yards rushing, but Ellison 104, Yuk 77, and Upshaw 48. Kane will return. And Kane breaks out of the pack, trying to get around the edge. Still on his feet and goes down at the 36. And now the Warhawks down nine points in 516. Now, don't rule out Pete Thomas and ULM just yet. Pete Thomas, over the span of his five year career, four playing years, of course, Colorado State, NC State, and now ULM, has engineered seven fourth quarter. <laughs> Game-winning drive. Yeah, he's seen a lot of football. There's not a scenario he's not played in, so Pete Thomas is going to be ready for this moment. In fact, he did it in their first two victories this year against Wake Forest and against Idaho. Can he do it again? 
Caesar in motion behind the line for the Warhawks. And Thomas throws to Caesar. Caesar driven out of bounds by Caleb Williams at the 39 yard line. Pass is complete to Rayshon Caesar. And right now, Jack Curtis, the defensive coordinator, is saying, look, do not let anybody behind you at this point. This is really the only way the ULM can get back in this football game. Second down, Thomas scrambling, throwing. That is complete downfield at the 45-yard line to Kalen Watson. First time he's touched the ball tonight. Darius Jones. Back up the line here quick. And it's enough for a first down. So first and 10, ball at the 45-yard line. Thomas steps up, runs for it, dives forward, gets four yards on the play. Tackle. Beat Thomas on the quarterback. Keep him all Johnson. ULM does have the three timeouts. He's knocked down by Bernard Gosselin after a three-yard game. So second down now. This is what Pete Thomas does. Throw underneath to the tight end Osborne, and he's out of bounds. That's Very quickly, the Warhawks have been Osborne. able to move to the 35-yard line of the Eagles. He is pushed out of bounds by Deion. And the Warhawks do have all three timeouts remaining since they've saved them for their defense. They get a score here. They can still get a stop and get the ball back. That's their goal. Third down and one from the 36. Pete Thomas dives for the first down. Thomas on the quarterback keeper. He's knocked down by Edwin Jackson. And the clock will stop Gaines as they move the chains here. First down. Moving again, 4.05 to play. First and 10 from the 35. Caesar, the catch, lunges forward. To About a half there yard shy of the Jackson first down out. at the 26 and a half. Clock running, 3.43. They're getting to that area of the field, Matt, where ULM really struggles, which is in the red zone because they can't run the ball effectively as the vertical field shortens up. Thomas takes a hit and goes down at the 30-yard line. Quarterback sack for Deshanti Gallon. Deshanti Gallon made a bunch of big plays tonight. Blocked a punt. There. Yeah, how about that? Quarterback sack, third sack of the night for Gallon. Third down. Thomas, all kinds of time. Fires to the far side. It's caught for a first down by a Jalen Holly at the 24. That's complete to a Jalen Holly. Deion Stanley on the coverage. The clock does they stop do here. First down. Running again. Well, they never did quite stop it. They still haven't set the change yet. <laughs> 251. Little quick uh, job on the old play clock. From the 24, Pete Thomas looking downfield, fires over this way. Kane was covered by the linebacker, Antoine Williams. So Thomas wisely throws it over his head. Good the decision there, not throwing the football. They've done a good job on the drive. But again, this is where they really struggle again is that that vertical field start to shorten down a little bit those safeties are now tighter and tighter to the box and not quite as much room for an offense that is built on space as this field shrinks there's not as much space for those wide receivers to find an opening second down and 10 ball at the 24. Thomas goes down at the 30-yard line. Another quarterback sack for the Eagles. Bernard Dawson with his third sack of the season, the fourth sack of the night for the Eagles. Clock continues to run. The third down and the rush for there, a late fourth when as Gallon comes in. Third down, going deep. Man falls down at the 12, intended target. Intended for was Shaquem Jefferson. Jefferson. And now it's fourth and down. Complete. And Manton, they'll bring him on to try to get the field goal here and try to get some points rather than try to convert a fourth and 16. They've got to get three somewhere. Exactly. So this they're going to try to get play. the three now. Smart play, and I imagine they'll try an onside kick here 
but you take the easy, well, not the easy points, but you try to take the most sure points when you get them. This is a 48-yard kick from the left hash. We told you already he's got two 51-yarders on the season, and he drills it. A 48-yard field goal good. by Justin Manton with 2.04 to play makes it 22-16. 2.04 to go in the game. It was 22, Warhawks 16. So now we will get, or do you? Do you, do you onside kick here? You do have three timeouts, or do you kick deep? and try to stop them. Well, a couple weeks ago versus UL Lafayette, the same sort of scenario, the, the Warhawks tried the onside kick and did a decent job at it. Unfortunately, weren't able to come up with it. Manton, one of the finest kickers in the nation, can he execute the onside kick? I, th I think they'll try the onside kick here, even though they do have three of their timeouts you know but you know they're going to run the ball and you, you the third team quarterback is out there i don't know maybe you kick it deep and try to stop them on three downs and get better field position because if you onside kick and fail then if you do get the ball back with a stop you're going to be in terrible field position. terrible field position yeah todd barry thinking it over right now We'll find out in just a moment what his decision is. Eagles are convinced that it's going to be an onside kick. They look like they got some hands people up there. Looks like most of them are wide receivers and defensive backs. A couple of linebackers as well. Justin Manton set to kick it off for the Warhawks. Keaton is standing at the 25-yard line. If they elect to kick deep. And maybe try to run down and get it. It is an onside kick attempt, and it is covered by the Eagles at the 45 yard line. That's why I don't like the onside kick there. It's such a low chance. It's a low percentage play. You're, you're absolutely right. And you got three timeouts in your pocket. Or I would have maybe tried to, you know, kick into no man's land a little bit deeper. Right, and that's why I was wondering if they would do that, is try to maybe see if they can just pooch that ball behind the front line in front of the returner. And outrun everybody to it. Either way, Trey Butler comes up with the onside kick. Well, Yute goes back out there <laughs> to try to finish off what would be a Sun Belt Conference championship clinching victory for the Eagles. They've got 204 to kill. And off Ramsby. And we'll see if the Warhawks burn that timeout right now. LA Ramsby should. Well, he did. Took only the five seconds off the clock. Ramsby only got about a yard and a half on the play. Now imagine a first down here is going to more or less put the game away. Yeah, well, it will. I mean, because they're going to burn all their timeouts. So uh, trying to stop them from getting it. So this ULM defense that has played so well here tonight, in fact, for over 40 of the 60 minutes of this ball game, kept the Eagles out of the end zone. Late in the game, Yoke, the third string quarterback, was the spark. The guys on defense stepped up and made some big plays as well. So second down and eight. Kissinger, what a big night he has had with 12 tackles. Hand off Ramsby. Tackle made by Cody Robinson. And the Warhawks use their second timeout. That took only five seconds. So, Warhawks done a very good job of executing their timeouts. They burned two of them. And they've lost only 10 seconds off the clock as we take a look at our Under Armour impact player of the game. And how crazy is it that it's a quarterback that was not even on our depth chart who had only five carries on the season and no pass attempts when he entered the ball game. Izzy Yuyut is our Under Armour impact player of the game. And this was the Balfour play of the game a 48-yard touchdown, a run that set up the touchdown run by Ramsby. Yeah, that was a backbreaker there. 
We're now being told that Upshaw was injured. Run by Yayut, and he does not pick up the first down. Timeout called by Barry, and that'll stop the clock with 1.48. Timeout, Louisiana Monroe. So now it's going to be fourth down and a couple of yards. Coach Rocky Boyman. <laughs> if you are Willie Fritz, do you go for it here on fourth down or do you punt it? Of course, we all know what can happen when you punt it. A big play could go the other way. And that's that's the one negative there. If I'm Willie Fritz right now, I put the ball in the hands of you and tell him, hey, son, you've been doing it all night. Let's see if you can do it one more time. Especially the way that Georgia Southern has, has, has been kicking the ball. Obviously, a couple a couple missed extra points and not exactly strong in the punt game as well. Well, I don't see Nowicki, the punter, out there, and I think the decision has been made. They will go for it on fourth down and two. If they get the first down, game over. Outright Sunbelt Championship for Willie Fritz of the Georgia Southern Eagles. I, I imagine Uyote is going to keep the ball in his hands one way or another and try to make a play to ice the game. Here you go. Out of the shotgun, Yu standing deep, seven yards from the line of scrimmage. And he will kick it, and it goes straight up in the air. Does take a nice Eagles bounce inside the 20 yard line and down to the 18 yard line. I thought he was standing awfully deep yeah. in the shotgun to be running a play, certainly a running play. He was seven yards behind the line of scrimmage. And so he does. Quick kick, much like Kevin Ellison had done in the first half. And so the ball goes over to the Warhawks. They need a touchdown to tie it, an extra point, which at times have been hard to come <laughs> by tonight, would win it. And they have 97 seconds left to work with and 81 yards to go. And, and that punt they just pulled off there really only got them 15 yards of field position. So Pete Thomas trying to engineer another fourth quarter game-winning touchdown drive. Ball was hit at the line of scrimmage. And it was Bernard Dawson who got his hands on it. Line of scrimmage by number 56, Bernard Dawson. Second down and 10. He's trying to hit Tyrone Carter along the sideline. Warhawks have no more timeouts. Bring pressure. Thomas gets outside the pocket, throws deep, and it is caught at the 41-yard line by Rashawn Caesar. Pass is complete to number two. Now, Rachel. how does that happen, Rocky? What well, happens is because Rashawn Caesar gets behind the safety, Deion Stanley. You got to keep. How in the world does that happen? The Three guys in down. coverage. Three guys are there to make that play. Harris Jones, the cornerback, was there. And also Deion Stanley. Ball at the 41 and plenty of time for the Warhawks after that big gator. Time for Thomas. Throws it away. Threw it in the general direction of Tyrone Carter. He was covered by the defensive back over here, the cornerback, Darius Jones. And I thought they, and thought they had the matchup they won. They had Rashawn Caesar on a crossing route, man-to-man -man versus the linebacker with one hand, Antoine Williams. And Pete Thomas seen him. I think he might have gone there. Look for a Jalen Holly. He's the number two guy in that three-man pack in the middle. They throw complete to Tyrone Carter. Did he catch it? They say he did, did not get yeah, out of bounds. Clock continues to run. Carter. He's not down. They're really so, aware they're not getting out of bounds. Yeah, now it's third down. Clock ticks under a minute. They get to get a playoff here, Matt. Third down and five. That Caesar did not get the first down. Clock continues to run. It's going to be fourth down. They got to run a play. Obviously, they, they, can't, they, can't, they, can't, fourth down, they can't spike it. They've got to pick up a first down or this game is over. Fourth down. Kenzie Jackson comes running in from the sideline. Lines up, bottom of your screen. Fourth down and two. Thomas fires. Complete. It's a first down at the 24-yard line to Rashawn That's Caesar. Stops two, the clock Rashawn with 26 Caesar. seconds. He Again, Georgia Rashawn Southern chooses to just rush two and drop yeah, nine into coverage there, but Pete down. Thomas somehow finds a window. First and 10, ball at the 24, clock running again, 17 seconds.
clock continues to roll. Thomas firing to the sideline, caught by Holly out of bounds at the 18-yard line, nine seconds. We've got time for maybe two plays. I think there's time if they run it quick for two plays here. This took just a little bit longer. Good job by the receiver getting out of bounds. If they want two plays, though, Matt, they're going to have to snap this ball and throw one to the outside of the field very quickly. What a finish in Statesboro. Eagles trying to clinch the outright conference championship. And now a timeout burned by the Eagles here. And that will leave them with two. This is a 30 second timeout. And nine seconds is right on that gray area where you have maybe two plays, but it's really close. You can't figure a play usually takes about four to five seconds, yep. and that's right in that range. Well, you got to throw to the end zone because anything short of the end zone pretty much will end the game. I guess. You could possibly throw in the middle of the field, get a first down, stop the clock, but to gather up that offensive line and get everybody set to run another play, really too risky. You've got to throw it to the end zone the, yeah. if you're Pete Thomas and the Warhawks. The only way you throw it over the middle is because, I mean, look, Georgia Southern is going to obviously defend the sidelines of the field. If you get a great wide receiver in no man's land in the middle of the field, you could dump the ball off. Because again, Georgia Southern is going to be covering the sidelines hard. Look for a Jalen Holly. He's lined up bottom of your screen. Clock running to the end zone. It's caught. Ball out. Incomplete. What a big defensive play over there by the Eagles and Matt Dobson to separate Kinsey Jackson from the ball. A huge play by Matt Dobson. This was caught and going to be a touchdown, Matt. But watch the range by Matt Dobson. In his hand, as he's getting ready to put it away, out goes the ball. And a timeout called by the Eagles as we are down to three seconds. Kenzie Jackson shaken up on the play. He took a heck of a hit from Matt Dobson. He had a touchdown that would have tied the game, and Dobson separated Jackson from the ball, and Dobson shaking up too. And Matt Dobson is one of the most unheralded players on this defense at times. He, they say he's not fast enough, but, but he's such a smart player back there. Again, a couple weeks ago, had the interception return for the touchdown. It was critical, and they're a big one tonight. Yeah, and the trainers are trying to get Dobson off the field, and you saw him say, we call the timeout, I can stay on the field. Take another look at the play here. And, and I don't know how Kenzie Jackson had no one on him at that play at all, but credit Matt Dobson. Can they say you don't have a lot of speed, Matt? He sure ate up a lot of ground coming from that center field position. And he brought the hammer. So Jackson's over on the sideline. And here we go, final play of the regular season. The Eagles just used their last timeout. What a fight put up by both of these teams. Georgia Southern trying to finish off what has been a historical season for the Eagles here. Their first year in the Sun Belt to win the outright championship, to run the table in the conference, to do it in the fourth quarter with a third team quarterback, is a UU, for ULM to come in here nothing to play for but pride and to make a statement to prove that they belong that their season could have been better than it was and here they are game comes down to one final play and matt a critical game like this a big game why shouldn't it not come down to the last play which is what we'll find out here with three seconds left does pete thomas have one more trick up his sleeve this is why pete thomas came to ulm said he wanted to get closure on his college career didn't finish up at NC State like he liked. Wanted to finish it off, and he gets one final play to try to cap it. Clock is run out. Pass is thrown. Incomplete. Georgia Southern outright champions in the Sun Belt Conference. And the pass is incomplete. Your final score, the Georgia Southern Eagles 22. The Warhawks of Louisiana Monroe. And look at Willie Fritz, 22 years of coaching. He now wins a championship in the first year.
Georgia Southern in the Sun Belt Conference, and look at the crowd going bonkers right now. Willie Fritz joins Paul Johnson and Mike Siwa in becoming the third Georgia Southern coaches ever to win a conference title in their first season. The two-time National Coach of the Year, Willie Fritz, leads the Georgia Southern Eagles to the Sun Belt Championship and a perfect 8-0 record in the conference. You might remember that the mantra all week was leave no doubt. It took exactly 60 minutes of football, four quarters, but the Georgia Southern Eagles leave no doubt of who is the Sun Belt Champions in 2014. And you saw the Ladies and gentlemen, director. your Eagles are the 2000. I talked to him at halftime. Tom They were petitioning the NCAA to try to get a bowl waiver. At this time, all fans are encouraged to First come attempt down rejected to the field as we take another look at the, the final play of the game. They tried to the seam right there to Please see it, but a nice job of tight coverage by Deion Stanley. Come on down, fans, and win Georgia Southern. Here at Paulson Stadium. But whether they get a bowl or not, they get a big, shiny Sun Belt trophy as we check in with Danielle Percival with Willie Fritz. Apparently, we're having some technical difficulties down there with Danielle Percival and Willie Fritz. We can't hear what they have to say. And hopefully we can get those ironed out so we can hit some words from Willie Fritz here on this big moment in Georgia Southern history. Six national championships at the FCS level. The winningest all-time FCS program for schools that played more than 50 games at FCS. And now in their first season in FBS, they win the outright Sun Belt Championship. Well, here's the thing, too. Remember, preseason, they were ranked number eight. It's one thing for a powerhouse of a team on paper to, to come into a new conference and they're ranked, uh, okay, they'll, they may win this thing. Georgia Southern was not in the conversation at the beginning of the year. Everyone's talking about Arkansas State, UL Lafayette, maybe even Texas State, but Georgia Southern. Now, you remember, we called Georgia Southern South Alabama early on the season, September. and we looked at each other after that game and said, wow, Georgia Southern has a real program here. 9-3, and 8-0 and oh in the Sun Belt. They become just the third program in FBS history to win a conference title in their first year of FBS, joining Nevada in 1992 and Marshall in 1997. And they match Florida Atlantic for the second most wins ever by a first-year FBS program at 9-3. We saw even Freedom the Eagle is, is hyped up right now, Matt. Big time win. A sea of blue has taken over the field here at Paulson Stadium. And the 2014 Sun Belt champions are the Georgia Southern Eagles. The lowest ever predicted team to win a championship in the Sun Belt after being picked to finish eighth in the preseason coaches poll. And this program has such a storied history with a lot of tradition, a very rabid fan base. I have, I've enjoyed getting to know a little bit. And here, this team just came out and showed what it was made of. A lot of seniors stepped up. We talked about the third string quarterback, Hugh Yoke, really winning the game, coming in late and winning the game for the Eagles. Couldn't have, couldn't have gone down in a better manner. Absolutely, and the Georgia Southern defense with four quarterback sacks really got after Pete Thomas in the second half.